guys, this is Christine Bertram and I am coming to you live from the hive on a Thursday. It's, I want to say Thursday, Thursday, but it's stamping Thursday. <laughs> so back in the day, <laughs> that's what we used to call tonight. <laughs> so, oh man, many moons ago. So we are going to be doing the heart and home card making class, which is my featured sweet bundle of the month uh, for February. And I will get to it in just a little bit, but there's a couple things I want to go over and share with you and talk about before we get started, like we normally do. First things first, though, <laughs> we're going to make sure that I can find you guys in my phone so that I can follow along with your awesome comments and when you share and when you ask me questions and then all is good. So let's see if it came up because the last time I went live, it came back or it came up right away. And then the time before that, it didn't come up at all. <laughs> so, oh, so technology is always crazy. So we will do that. Let's go into my page and see if it comes up that way. Because I always like to make sure I'm in the right page. Oh, there it is. Popped up. Okay. Wow, we got lots of people. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Randy. Hi, Julie. And Stacy's with us. And Jean Terwilliger. Jean, did you hear that you won the celebration board number five drawing last night? I don't know if you got a chance to watch it, but you were number 22. I put your name on that square when your order came in last week sometime, I think, and you had a second square. And you had uh, the lucky number 22 picked. And so you have a $25 shopping spree, more or less. It's a $25 gift certificate towards product. So that's exciting. Hi, Carissa. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Carla. There's Tammy. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Kathy King. So um, what my mom and I worked on this afternoon is we got out uh, some the ink, paper, scissors for next week, you guys. So uh, that is in the mail. Um, everybody that had registered except for one who hadn't confirmed yet, but otherwise, like Jennifer, you have a big package coming. <laughs> I think I like three or four classes in there for you because we consolidated yours. So that's awesome. Um, so hi, Deb Norman. Um, so yeah, so you guys, for those that got ink, paper, scissors, you should have gotten an email or will be getting one soon from Pirate Ship. So when I ship my packages, as long as I have your email address, I can include that so that you're notified with the tracking number. Hi, Linda Hodge. Hi, Dee. Hi, Carol. So that's what I worked on this afternoon. And then during the day, I'm excited to say that Diane and I worked on, you're not going to believe this, but the April Let's Just Stamp cards. Woohoo! <laughs> you guys, what I have been working on very much so with Carissa and Diane is we've been working on designing cards. And we're trying to get me caught up so that all the cards for through April are designed by the end of Mar uh, by the end of February. So get in like a month ahead. Wouldn't that be awesome? Would you guys like that to know what cards we're making already through April? <laughs> so hi Sherry Martin. Oh Linda. So you don't get a notification and I figured out why, Linda, is because I have your email address wrong in there. When I checked it the last time after we talked about it, I think that we're missing, or I should say, I am missing the H because your email address is like bl like Blanche something, like B-L-A-N-C-H-E, and I think it's missing the H. <laughs> so Linda, what I have to do the next time I have a shipment that goes out to you is I have to delete that email address because that's what's saved. An incorrect email address is saved and we have to get the, I have to get the correct one in there. So hi Mary Carls, Chili and Wendy and Jericho. Hi Cheryl Thomas. Hi Patsy Roberts. Hi Donna from Vancouver, Canada. Woohoo! So, so Linda, I did figure that out. I don't think I ever told you that's what the issue was, but I was missing a letter from your email address. So, hi Donna, hi Elizabeth, hi Joanna. So, woohoo! The gang's all rolling in here. That's so exciting. So, did you guys see Kelly's Technique Thursday today? I was so excited. She did the paper frames. So Michelle Heim introduced us, or me, I should say, to the paper frames at the Winter Creative Escape. That was her presentation and it was so cool and I was so inspired by it that I decided that that was going to be our 3d project for the summer creative escape come July so you guys got a little sneak peek preview hi Jewel um hi Elaine oh Linda you're very welcome hi Julie um under a tornado watch in Alabama be safe Jewel <laughs> and then look at right underneath Jewel I see a Jewel Jewelly. <laughs> Hi, Carbon Melendez. So, yes, you guys, it's so crazy. Um, so, 
Kelly did her technique Thursday, and I'm just going to pop the camera down. Hi, Patricia Settle. Um, let's see if I get that right. So, um, and I have a happy mail. I got a card today. So I'm going to flip down really quick. So this is what you guys would see if you watched the technique Thursday with Kelly today. Hi, Mary Jean. Oh, so super cool. So she, the, it, like these, and then you can decorate the inside of these. These would be great if you guys do anything with craft sales or homemade gifts for friends and family. Um, you could do them seasonal um, and put them up. They're like home decor. Hi, Barbara Gobby. Um, so this is um, one that she made and she went through very explicitly how to do the measurements and how to make it. And then she had a peach one here and she started off by showing her inspiration to do this for Technique Thursday is Jennifer Merle Hampshire made this for me for the Winter Creative Escape and I have this on display in the hive. And so she was inspired to make like a frame thing. So, so that was Technique Thursday for you guys that missed it. Go back and watch it if you like. I already did share it to the... Um, the Facebook groups, the VIP and the um, Stampin' Game Night group. <laughs> so this one came from Arliss Canoop. Woohoo, Arliss, I got your money today for class. Thank you. And I got this. I didn't have a moment to text you. I got this card at five o'clock when I got my mail. So um, life is better with friends like you. I love it. And she used a combination of the hand pen paper with that bundle from the annual catalog. You guys, I own it. I can't remember the name of it. Somebody that is watching probably knows what the name of that is. It has a punch and a stamp set that goes with it. Hi, Cindy Runtree. Very pretty car card artist. Love it. Okay, so that was my happy mail I got today. Um, uh, doo -doo -doo. Hi, Chris Dudarenki. Um, Carol Alanis. I got your mail today. I got your swap cards for the customer swap, and I found this little handy dandy little gadget in here. I put it right here to see how it works. Carol commented that she sees my ink pads slide around a lot. So this is like a, a it's not sticky, but it's like grippy. Hi, Deb Norman. Um, she did a great job. I thought so too, Deb. Um, hi, Laura Sullivan. So, so Carol, honest, I know you watch, so I wanted you to see. So I'm going to try that out tonight. <laughs> hi, Jeannie Parker. All right, you guys. So every celebration, I do something called a celebration celebration. It's different than the celebration launch party. <laughs> it's different than the celebration hoorah rah class. It's the celebration celebration. And now that Stampin' Up! decided to two celebrations, all that basically got doubled. <laughs> yes, pull the hair out, right? <laughs> like So it's like two of each of those every year. And so um, the the celebrations start in January and this one is going to be in July. And so that always introduces and kicks off the catalog. So it's like a catalog launch party and celebration card class. Hi, Laura Weigeland. And then I do a hoorah rah class, which is towards the end of celebration to like kind of send it off and do a farewell. And that class is actually next week, you guys. Next um, Friday online or Wednesday in person is the celebration hoorah rah class. And when I flip the camera down, I'll show you those cards. Um, I think I have one set unaccounted for. So whoever would be the first person to say they're interested, it would be yours. I don't think I'll make more kids. Not, not sure. <laughs> it would, I, would, I don't know yet. <laughs> so, um, but I know I have one set left. Um, oh, Bow and Blossom. No, I don't know if it's, is it Bows and Blossom? I think something with Blossoms. Um, yeah, good, good. That could be it though, Jeannie. <laughs> so, um, and then there's uh, the celebration celebration. And what I like to do is I like to reward. Hi, Christine. Um, <laughs> I like to reward um, my customers and my team and new team members for having a phenomenal celebration. And every time somebody places a $50 order, I'm doing that celebration board. It's over there right now because it's not full, but I try to recognize people with their orders throughout the whole time. But then for the celebration, celebration is if you've spent $150 with me, not through yourself if you're on my team, if you've bought $150 worth of product through me, if you're new to me um, and you've placed your first order and you're interested in joining to see how I do it, um, you're also welcome. Hi, Millie Kindle. Hi, Connie. Um, thanks for sharing, Jeannie. I appreciate it. Um, or if you're on my team and you have two newbies sign up on your team, that's how you're welcome to attend and be invited to my celebration celebration. And I always do a 3D project or something special for the celebration celebration. And hi, Anna Rebidoux. And so I always kind of mirror it off of 
uh, what I do for a 3D project for my escapes. And so this one is a paper pumpkin box. And so what you'll get for this are the materials to make a little faux, like a paper pumpkin box. Uh, for the winter creative escape, I made mine into a photo box. And then for the celebration celebration, I kept it more versatile that it could be like a gift card or like a gift paper pumpkin box. And I'll flip the camera down and I'll show you. So I already have maybe 20 people signed up for this um, because I have already calculated through January who was invited. If you've placed orders since the beginning of February and have qualified, I haven't had a moment to go through and add that all up yet. But just know if you heard me list all those criteria, that's how you would be invited into the celebration celebration. So my internet thing is wonky. <laughs> it says, you want to switch your internet to connect better? I'm like, yes, always, please. <laughs> Hi, Barbara Moynan. So like Laura Sullivan, I caught you um, already because uh, you had ink, paper, scissors going out. And I went real quick to see once where you were at with your orders. And so you qualified, even though I haven't told you yet, yours is already coming in the mail. So <laughs> hi, Frankie Canada. Happy Thursday. So I'm going to flip this down. So, so you might want to um, check where you're at with orders with me. Um, it's based off of orders, basically. So um, if you're close and you just need to put a little bit more in yet uh, before the end of the month, then you would get an, uh, an invitation from me and you could attend in person or it's online March 3rd. So hi, Angela Knutson. So Angela, I have yours ready for you too. So you could pick yours up whenever you like. So I'm going to flip down and show you guys. Um, um, Frankie, yeah, it's for the celebration celebration. Um, all the details, you guys, if you go to cardsbycrispy.com, and you go to the date of March 3rd. That's where the that day, if you want to go there, that's where I have everything listed out. There's just three ways to be invited. Um, and you can go to that on March 3rd to, to hear them, see them, read it, and then see what days the event is. So this is the make and take project that we're going to do, though. So you can get these. Hi, Penny Powell. Yay, you found me. Woohoo. So this is the little paper pumpkin. So it's like the big paper pumpkin box, only smaller. And they are actually food grade. So you'll get one of these in your little kit. Plus you're gonna get a quarter pack of this rainbow designer paper. So you get one sheet of the 12 different pages. And then it's gonna be up to you how you wanna design it. Um, I have a label for you. I have some ribbon. And then you're gonna have some mats like this melon mambo mat. And this is how I decorated mine. You're gonna have the ability to decorate yours however you want. Hi, Marsha Long. So I cut, so your designer paper you're gonna get is the, 12, the six by six sheets, and you can cut them to whatever size you want. Um, I've included some labels for you to add, some extra strips of cardstock. So I provide all the cardstock. You'll get sheets of the designer paper. I threw in labels. I threw in a whole strip of the iridescent rhinestones. And so this, to me, would be a great, awesome gift to give somebody just to bring a smile to their face. You need a birthday present for somebody, a thank you gift for somebody. So watch how this works. It's like a little accordion book. And so this will flip up. And so you'll have to cut your paper down to the size. I have instructions. So we're gonna walk through this on March 3rd as a group. Um, you can watch the Facebook Live for free, but to get this project, that's where you need to qualify. And I've made these into little pockets here. So you'll get this little triangle from me. You'll have some extra designer paper. And you guys, I have in here, for example, a quick trip gift card. And so like you could get a $10 gift card, put that in here. And then if you keep flipping, I have um, an Eden Meat Market craft beer club card because I was just looking for things to put in my pockets really quick. And so <laughs> that's my little beer club card. But again, a little pocket to put like a $10, $5 gift card. And I put on here a little sunshine for your day. And then you flip it again. And oh my gosh, I got my uh, David Ransom's um, <laughs> business card is what I found really quick. And you have a pocket to go here. And then it ends like that. I decorated my box like that one says, may your day be filled with sunshine. This one says, wishing you a little extra happiness just because you're you. Uh, yes, Chris, get yours together. Um, so this, I kept it more versatile that you could gift this or if you do craft shows, like this is a great little gift that you can make and sell for people, you know, awesome. And yours might not even look like mine. You could change your designer paper up and do different orders, but I'll teach you how 
to do it. And so like the backside, you could even decorate the backside if you wanted, but I generally just looked at the front and then you could add embellishments. Um, this is not a card, Marcia. This is, I call it a paper pumpkin, like accordion box. That's what this is. Um, yes, Elaine, Eden Meat Market has craft beer and apparently I am four away from getting a free six pack. <laughs> so tell your kids. <laughs> so yes, so that's one way you can make your paper pumpkin box. Now for the escape, so like Chris Dudarenki mentioned, um, Tammy, yours is going to be in the mail next week. So yay. Uh, so I'm mailing it with your fun folds cards, I think, Tammy. So that's one way you could make your box. Now, for the sum, the winter creative escape that Chris just talked about, I did a different, like, uh, we did abstract beauty paper for that because they got that in their kits. Um, same concept, though, except for this one. I made this into a photo box, you guys. So you could completely take this and skip the pockets and use that as, like, decoration. And I have to thank um, Tammy Sokolik and Anna Rabidou for helping me. This is another example of you can put photos in. So this is Sammy and this is Summer. So Sammy Salami and Summer Sausage is what my brother teased me. And <laughs> we could never call each other names growing up, but we could call our cats names. So yes, yeah, so they have a Sammy Salami and Summer Sausage. And so they put this together. I gave them the pictures and they put this together for me, added some embellishments and bling. Finding a friend is the best discovery of all. Hi, Deanne. And so um, more pictures and there's my little summer. She loved to sit like that. <laughs> and then here she's dreaming and I'll be right by your side. And there she loved to be in the blankets. There's my mom with Sammy and there's summer in my bag and there's no one like you in the whole universe. So you could go with a totally different outlook on your materials. You're going to get uh, an assortment of materials from me that are geared towards the rainbow. Hi, Karen Wetstein. But you could do a, like a pocket thing or you could do like a photo. So it's going to be completely up to you how you guys would want to put yours together. So again, that's the celebration celebration. It is coming up. Oh, Kelly, you forgot your coffee here. I just realized her cup is here. Huh. <laughs> so that is uh, the first week of March. It's, I think, maybe the second, the third, and the fifth. Three ways to earn a spot is by being a customer and purchasing from me, signing up on my team, um, and then also um, um, new team members or team members that already that in, in have two people sign up on their team. So like Kay Warren had Christy and April sign up on her team. So both of the, all of them basically got spots because they placed their orders right away. And so that's how you can do it. So again, if you go to my calendar of events, March 3rd, you can find all the details on that. So um, hi, Deborah. Hi, Mo. Hi, Hildenel. Woohoo! Hildenel, your uh, monthly cards went in the mail, I think, yesterday. So um, just so you know, they're on the way. Okay, so that's celebration, celebration. I'm going to run through a couple other things that are coming up real quick, too, so that you guys can kind of see uh, and make sure you get signed up. You guys, always the most important thing is just to get on my class list <laughs> and helping me make sure you get on that class list. I know there's probably been five or six of you over the course of the last two years where I've missed putting your name down. And uh, that happens. <laughs> we always make it right, but it happens. But it's always good just to get your name on the list and we can always figure out to the payment and the ordering part later. So... Hi, Gwen Petrashek. Woohoo! I practiced your name today when I did your shipment. Um, I said it in my head. <laughs> so I'm going to show you guys really quick what we have coming up um, next week. This one is, um, this was Friday night online for you guys. We're going to be featuring four cards using the Celebration product. Oh, I'm freezing. Oh, I think I'm better now. Okay. I'm watching that camera like a hawk. So um, stamps that you need are the Camellia, Common Camellia, the Herbie Love Bug one, a pineapple, and the bird. So all of these are celebration products. I believe I have one left. So that's coming up next Friday for you guys, 5.30 Central. And then the night before, you guys, though, this is the, um, the ink, paper, scissors for hand penned. I think I have openings for this one as well. Um, and so this is the one where you get the designer paper, you get the embellishments, you get the ribbon in your kit. And so these feature the hand pen. So we're going to be making these live next Thursday. So a week from tonight. Okay. So that's a little bit about what's coming up um, next week. Now you guys are, might be sick of me. I'm not sure. I don't think you guys generally do, but you never know. Uh, we have a stamp a stack on Sunday <laughs> and 
I will flip down really quick. So in case you're looking for something to do on Sunday and you want to watch, the class starts at 3 p.m. Central online. I have no kits left. They sold out two weeks ago already, you guys. And I already I had somebody pay me for it without checking that I had any. And then they were gone. So I had, I had to refund somebody's money. I hate having to do that. So there are none left. So sorry. But I'm going to make these live with you guys on Friday. So I'll flip down just to give you guys a little teaser. We're going to be making the Artfully Composed Stamp a Stack of Birthday Cards. So this one, you guys, if you're, you know, pay attention if you're interested in seeing these cards. So this class is on Sunday at 3 p.m. Central. You guys, my time is always Central. I'm in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. So when I say a time, I always mean Central Standard Time. Okay, and then I'm going to tease you with two more cards. Uh, classes really quick before we get started with Hard and Home. Where did I put cards? Over here. Um, I'm going to show you some March classes. So every month I always do a showcase. Hi, Pamela Leahy. I always do a showcase featuring the upcoming cards for the month. And so there will be a separate video showcasing and showing all the March cards, but we got some cards made this week. And so I'm super excited to show them to you. I know some of you may have seen these already, but some of these might be new to you. And so just know if you're interested, it's good to get your name on the class list right away. I will be there and working on mine. Yay, fancy, woohoo. Okay, so fun folds, you guys. Oh my goodness. Chris and I made these. So much fun. This one is amazing. It's using the Soaring Swallows. <clears throat> Gee, I always butcher it. I know, Carissa. Um, swallows, the what's Soaring Swallows, Swallowtails. But it's an easel, like a triple easel card, you guys. And so that one, this class is the like March 7th-ish or something. I haven't flipped the calendar yet. But there's one card. This one's a little peekaboo card. Carol Alanis, thank you. You inspired us for this one. I love this. That pulls out and it's like a little pocket card. And this one is inspired by Michelle Heim. Hi, Denise. And this is another little corner pocket card. So you guys, this is the Fun Folds class. This one is by the sea, um, sea creature one. Seize the day! So um, it's the first week of March-ish, like within the first eight days. So we did pull in celebration paper. So we figured we were promoting it during the month of sale where celebration is live. Um, but we will be using retired paper by the time this class is held. But I didn't, we didn't think anybody really would care because the cards are so amazing. <laughs> so, okay. So you guys, that's fun folds in case you are seeing those for the first time. This is already published on my website. And if you go to March 10th, it's March 10th for that class. So if you go to calendar of event, March 10th, and then Diane and I got these done. This is the let's just stamp it's March 14th for you guys online Monday. <laughs> I'll take a lunch at one o'clock that day because I'll be done with my leave of absence by then and have to have figured things out. So, uh, so this one is featuring the flowering, nope, timeless tulips. And so, um, and the flowering fields paper. So that is what we have for the three cards for Let's Just Stamp. Okay, so um, yes, you guys, are loving the fun folds. Every time I do a fun folds class, I completely sell out and have about 70 kits usually um, to do for that. I already have 45 people signed up, you guys. <laughs> the class is not for three weeks. And I have I have a guess that it will have like maybe 30 more people signed up yet because they are so cool. Everybody loves making fun folds. And when I do all the cutting and the die cutting and the scoring and the embossing and have it that all you have to do is a little stamping and assembly, you guys love it. So <laughs> in general, you do. So, okay, I'm going to flip these back here. Okay, so that's a little teasy teasy of what's coming up. Um, oh, we have New Horizons done already. We did the ink, paper, scissors for March already. I almost have the memories and more card class done. So come next week, you guys, I'll be doing the showcase video of all the classes that are coming up in March. So super cool. Um, March along, yes, the fun, uh, March 10th. It's uh, um, a Facebook Live class on Thursday, March 10th at 6 p.m. Central. Um, it's you know, my Facebook Lives are for you guys. I don't charge anything. If you ever try to have to pay me for a Facebook Live, then somebody's bamboozling you. <laughs> it's not me. Um, my Facebook Lives are free. It's if you ever want kits for me, like card kits, um, then there's a cost. Either you can buy them or you can get them free with an order depending on the class, okay? So, oh, Deb loves all the cards so far for March. So, Deb, we completely cased your card. Oh, I don't know where it is. 
We cased, I love your, we called it the DSP blocking technique that you got from somewhere that somebody else did a long time ago, whatever, Some came from somewhere else. Um, but it's where you cut the DSP down and then you cut it this way and then you cut it this way. <laughs> um, the pineapple card was cased off of that and then we also just cased it again. We love the layout. So um, uh, I hang with some very talented gals. Yes, Elaine, super true, very, very true. And it's so much fun creating um, with these talented, amazing ladies. So, um, yeah. Okay. So are you guys ready for heart and home? <laughs> so this is my sweet bundle class. I've been doing this class, this type of class for probably three years now. It started off that I only did my monthly class, like one class a month. And then this became my second class of the month. And it was because there's so much stuff in the catalogs that I needed to feature, feature, um, hi, Luann Johnson, um, that I wanted to feature. I didn't need to do anything, but I wanted to feature. And I thought, well, this way I can showcase an entire suite of products or bundle. Like in December, it was the Mary Snowflakes bundle, but I coupled it with the Peaceful Place um, suite of products. Uh, so I love to be able to like show off the, everything from a suite and make four cards with it and just show you the versatility. Oh yeah, that layout is awesome, Deb. Totally agree. Uh, so this is what I refer to as my sweet bundle class. Um, it includes a sweet and or a bundle. And this one is going to be the heart and home. So like last month was sweet talk. Uh, so I try to use everything within the suite. Um, in this case, this is a super sweet. So there's two bundles, which is awesome. Use stuff from both of them. Uh, there's also a memories and more card pack in here and um, no cards and envelopes. I did not bring those into this class. They are staying exclusive to the Memories and More class that I'm doing in March. So otherwise, we pulled in everything, or I should, I've made these cards. <laughs> so I designed these by myself, actually. So I always say we, because I don't like to forget anybody. <laughs> so I want to show you guys the Hard and Home suite really quick in the mini catalog. Um, we'll also do roll call really quick. Hi, Sue Sorrell. Um, and then we'll go over what's in this suite of products in case it's new to you or you haven't seen it before so you can see where stuff comes from. And then we'll get making our four cards. Woohoo! So, okay, I'm gonna flip or still skin the camera down and we always can go to the first page in this catalog. The, this is the mini catalog, you guys. That's the, I call it the spring mini catalog. Um, in the first page here has the different suites listed. Um, Heart and Home is 58 to 61. So we can go here to 58, and I had mentioned it's a super sweet, um, mega sweet. Um, it's just, there's two bundles in it, and so it makes it big. Uh, there's also an embossing folder in here. It's called the Hive Embossing Folder. I love it, you guys gotta, I gotta love this because it's got the bees in it. Um, there's denim ribbon, which I should grab it really quick. Hang on one second. Um, so you guys can see, this was actually a blast from the past. If you guys remember, there was a dinosaur, Dino Days maybe, from like three years ago. And that, <laughs> I was blown away because I'm like, oh my gosh, the item number was the same and I still had some from three years ago. And, <laughs> and so this is the denim ribbon. So that got used on a couple cards. This also includes the classic matte dots, which I only pulled in the, the vanilla-ish ones. I call them vanilla, the vanilla ones here. Um, but it's got black, gray, vanilla, and white. And so we'll use some of those. And then the doilies. So the doilies, I had used the gray ones for Renoculus Romance from last week. So, oh, sorry, I used the blue ones. Um, so these are the Misty Moonlights got used on last week's card. So then I had a whole bunch of the cider and the gray ones left. And so designed two cards using the other two colors. You guys, <laughs> These doilies are $5 and you get 30 of them. It blows me away that you get 30 doilies for $5. I just, I feel like there's a pricing mistake, but I'm not going to call and tell them that. <laughs> Hi, Doris. Thanks for sharing, Bonnie Kelly. Hello. Um, it's like, how do you get 30 doilies for $5? So if you're not a doily person, you might not be so excited about it, but you have three colors on the, you know, the one side, but you can also use white side and then you could color it with ink and make any color that you really wanted. So doilies add a little bit of daintiness. <laughs> I feel like my room was full of do doilies growing up. We had doilies like everywhere and then stuff was sitting on the doilies. So there was decoration. <laughs> um, then the note cards, envelopes, and the memories of more pack are here. And then the designer paper is here. So the designer paper 
has wood grains on one side, different patterns, and then you've got more solid colors. Yep, you can use blending brushes to change the color. You betcha, Melanie. You could use sponge daubers. You could use sponges. You could even just brush your ink pad on it. Like, you, yeah, because they're white, you can totally add color. Uh, oh, you just, <laughs> oh, that's funny, Melanie. I was like, yep, <laughs> it's all good. Um, then this way people really get reinforced knowledge that you can color the backs of your doily. See, we hit both sides. Um, then you have like more solid. So you've got your green, purpley. The cider is my favorite here with the B. And then some floral patterns and then that, whatever that is. I'm not sure what you name that pattern. Um, it's like ish, a diamond ish. I'm not sure. <laughs> if there's a name for it, I don't know what it is for that pattern. So when you flip this page over then, you get to see the stamps at full size. And we used both of these in the cards, used a bunch of the sentiments and used some of this over on this side as well. Um, so that is what the heart and home suite of products is all about. So in case you guys weren't aware of that, that's where this comes from. So I'm gonna skedaddle this over yonder um, and I'm gonna show you really quick some of the other things here. Um, you have doilies on your end tables. <laughs> yeah, my, my old room where I grew up in my parents' house is still got the doilies there. So in one of the cards I pulled in the time-worn type embossing folder. So that got carried over from the holiday catalog. And then we have here the stamp sets. So there's a Honey Bee Home goes with the Honey Bee Blooms dies. And then the Blessings of Homes go with the Flowers of Home dies. And then I pulled in some sentiments from Happy and Heartfelt and Celebrating You um, just to get some extra sentiments. And then the Quiet Meadow, there's a label that got used and one of these spriggy things got used. So that's some of the dyes and Nature's Harvest. I pulled in Nature's Harvest dyes. So that's where a lot of the stuff comes from in case you guys are wondering about the products that were used for these cards. But, oh, you guys, there's a long list here. So we have 32 people that did the Heart and Home class with me via the online I had eight last night and I have 11 for Saturday. So, whew. so in case you're wondering if I have card kits left, I guess it depends on how many more people are interested. At this point, I already have to make more kits. I've realized that um, because I told a few people that, yep, I'm good, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make it happen. And so I either have one extra kit left or I have five because I'm either making four or I'm making eight, right? So if this is a class, when we get done with this, if this is a class that you're interested in getting card kits for, please email me, text me, call me, Facebook message me and ask. You don't have to say it necessarily in the comments. You can. Hi, Donna, joining late. You can comment and say, hey, I like it and I'll try to remember it and make a note, but it's always best to communicate with me in a way that I can type back. Uh, and so if you are interested in the card kits, please reach out to me and I'll see if I can make it happen. Um, if I have five people interested, that works. If it's one, two, three, or four or five, I think it'll, it'll work. But so, um, ladies, whoop, whoop. Yeah, Penny, lots of gals here. So without further ado, let's do roll call. Deanna Stell, Angela Knutson, Jennifer Jones, Sandy Wicklander, Barbara Moynan, Karen Steg, Karen Wettstein, Leslie McMinn, Kathy Groves, Mary Carls, Patsy Roberts, Doris Monson, Sue Somerville, Tammy Steckling, Pat Mater, D. Serena, Kathy King, Laura Sullivan, Annette Rollin, Jeannie Parker, Kathy McMahon, <laughs> Carolyn Ketchmark, Barbara Godby, who got her kids today. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. So you guys, if you saw my um, picture last week of my mail going to the post office, there was about maybe 50 packages on there and every one of those packages got scanned except for Barbara's. So until today, it said that it was awaiting delivery to the post office, meaning it was expecting me to drop it off. So Barbara's been watching it. I've been watching it all week. It was delivered today. Woohoo! Sherry Martin, Barb Barco, Carissa Alberts, Kat Birch, Carmen Melendez, Penny Powell, Terry Costin, Feline Mays, and Carla Lake. Woohoo, you girls, we're gonna have a great class tonight. So again, I do go through, so if you guys are new to me um, and uncertain about how all this works is I make the four cards with you live right now. If you have questions throughout, ask them. I watched like a hawk. 
Um, Facebook does not always show me every single comment. And sometimes people ask why I don't respond to their comments because I don't always see them. But I do try to respond. And within the group too, you guys, I have a lot of awesome people that watch and they help me answer questions. Um, but know that the replay for this is always available for you to watch in my Facebook page, in the video section, or in my YouTube channel. So if you fall behind or if you're not keeping up, please do not get upset with me. Do not get impatient. Don't be distraught. Just go with the flow and say, okay, well, I can always go back and watch the video later. You can refer to the PDF tutorial. You guys, I already sent the PDF tutorial out to you guys, I think on Tuesday. So you should have that in your inbox. So you have pictures, you have measurements, you have written instructions. Um, so just know that I don't want you to be stressed out and not have fun with the class because of that. So um, these cards, oh my gosh, you guys, I had the eight gals last night. We didn't finish till nine. So it, these cards are labor intensive. There are many layers. I did not hold back on anything. There are layers galore. Um, and I would highly recommend watching the video versus trying to put them together based off of a picture because you will see all my little tips and tricks and the little nuances that you're going to find with these cards. So with, <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> front and center, Penny said, I love it. Okay. Yes. Yay for the replays. I mean, if you guys didn't have replays, I don't think you'd like my classes. I really don't because I do cruise through them pretty fast. So we have four amazing cards and you guys... Oh, it's like, which card do we do first is always what I wonder. So I'm, I always save my favorite for last. And I'm going to say that one second last, this one, and this one. So I put them in order. <laughs> I don't know. But it's so funny because you guys end up liking them all. And there's like, it's good. So, okay. So let's just see here. I got to get my phone cable out of the way and see if that works. I gotta, so <laughs> make sure I can read your comments. Okay. So let's flip down and show you the card we're going to work on first. You guys, the other thing to disclaimer, <laughs> Kathy Groves told me what she did. So if you guys are new to me, just be very careful. Kathy said she does not open the kits until she's sitting at the table that is a clean table and there's nothing around her really because there are so many bits and parts and pieces um, it's, you've been doing all of your December ones this week by the replays. Awesome, Jeannie. That's great. Um, so Kathy says to make sure you have a clean space because I do cut three embellishments for each kit. I don't like, these aren't product-based classes. These are actually card classes and you guys get the little bits and parts. And so when you open these up for me, they're going to be static electricity. They're going to end up under your shoe. They're going to end up under your butt. They're going to be on your sleeve. They're going to be in your hair. Like Judy Emma last night, it was sticking in her hair. <laughs> It all happens to all of us. So you just have to be very careful opening up your card kits, okay? That's my disclaimer. Um, oh, so Chris is, so yeah, and Krista loves to watch along to see how to make them so that she can make them relatively easier after the fact. So, okay. And Laura's all caught up. Woohoo! Good job, Laura. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I gotta take a drink of water before we get <laughs> started. Otherwise, I know I'm gonna be <laughs> coming up for air later. All right. Okay. Whew. This is our first one. I'm so excited, you guys. I made these cards back in December. I designed these so many moons ago. It seems so crazy. It's like, oh my gosh, class is finally happening. Okay, so this is the card that we're going to be working on just now. Crumb cake, evening evergreen, pale papaya. Ink for this one is only at evening evergreen. And so my insides, I usually put them um, on the back so that in-person class, then they just have to flip over. So that's what we've got going on here. So just so you guys can see the card. And then in your card kits, the Kathy says the, the butterflies are teensy. Yes. So it's really funny. My dad helped me cut some of these apart for the winter creative escape. And he goes, are these really brass? And I said, yeah, they are dense. They're thick and heavy, but they are teeny tiny, you guys. So in your kit for this one, you got three butterflies. I think I put, I can't even get them out. Um, I think I put two large and a small butterfly in each of your kits. So yes, they are floating around in your kits. You also, let's, let's go through what's in your kit here. So you'll have your crumb cake base, traditional base, eight and a half by five and a half. When you go to fold it, you guys, I always score it in the middle, but I always recommend lining up your corners and then burnishing it. So we have to fold your cards to get them into your envelopes, but um, got the kit today, so I already did two cards. Perfect, Carmen, you're ahead of the game. Woohoo! 
Um, I always, I don't burnish your envelope, your, your cards though for you. So you always want to go back and burnish. It's a vertical card. I'm wondering if I should put this, put that there and put this like that. Let's see how that works. Okay. It's tan. It matches the table here or the countertop. Okay. And then you should have two mats in your kit. They're the same size, four by five and a quarter. One is the white one for your inside. And then when you look at this one, you can see the embossing the time-worn type embossing folder. There are words to it. It's hard to see them and make out what they actually say, but you can see like there's the letter A, uh, and so you can figure out which direction it goes. So that goes on the top. You also have a piece of evening evergreen here. This is, um, I think, um, do, 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 do one inch by like four and an eighth maybe. That goes here. This is the die that comes from the um, Quiet Meadow. And you may have to like poke any pieces out that need poking. Um, I did notice that my helper with the die cutting of these, I think she doubled up and she did two or three at a time. And so some of them weren't cut all the way through, but I think I double checked everybody's just to make sure your holes were working adequately. <laughs> that sounds like a personal problem, but your, hopefully your holes are good. Um, you should have a little strip of denim ribbon this is also another die that comes from the Quiet Meadow. And then you'll have this foliage piece here that comes from the this suite. You'll have to take and probably poke out that, any little bits and parts that are holy. And there, let's get them. So you can do any poking. And then um, you'll have a piece of white. So, okay, I'm gonna tell you guys, I generally, do die cut the pieces of things that are stamped and give you a white strip. In this case, they were so particular to this actual like stamp set both the times. This card and one other card, I just gave you white pieces. Um, so that I thought, I'm not die cutting these because I don't want to have half of them thrown away. I looked at it as if you have this bundle, you have the stamps and you have the dies. And if you don't, you hopefully have something else you could use. And so I gave you a white piece that's big enough for this. And so you'll have to stamp it and then die cut it or fussy cut it yourself. Um, hi, Diane. Hi, Robin. Uh, so just a disclaimer, this is one of those cards. So generally, like I had shown you in the past, like an octopus card from the fun folds. And I said, well, I'll give you the die cut. Usually I give you the die cuts and then you could try to stamp them. But for this, I made the executive decision. I'm like, no, it's not, we're not gonna, we're just gonna give you pieces of paper. So there's a little different than what is in the past. So I hope that doesn't throw anybody off. Okay, so you guys would have, let me just see here. I gave you, let's grab a piece of white paper. I would have given you like some sort of a white piece of paper like that. Um, and that is for you to stamp your flower. Then you have this piece of the designer paper and it's actually, it's die cut with the stitched embossing folder. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, the stitched rectangle die. <laughs> okay. And then you have a pale papaya and a evening evergreen mat. So that's what you got. So let's do a little stamping. Get our evening evergreen ink pad really quick here. So that's the pad. And we need those two things. And actually, you guys are not going to really believe me when I say this, but we're using crumb cake as well. And so we're going to put, I'm gonna see how that grippy grip works. Okay, so let's do our evening evergreen. And so you have this flower. So this flower comes from one of those stamp sets. And if you don't have this flower, you guys, I think, and you don't have another flower, you could actually make this card without that flower. So like, let's say you don't have any floral stamps. These two pieces right here, could be enough that you wouldn't even need to put the flower. So I try to think of ways for you guys to be able to make my cards look very similar without necessarily having stamps. So you're gonna have to stamp your flower, stem flower thing, onto the piece of white that I gave you. And then if you don't have the dies, you could fussy cut it. Or if you do have the dies, you could die cut it. If you have a different stamp set all together where you have some sort of flower thing going on, you could do that. So I do have, um, by the magic of TV, I already stamped and colored mine, but I want to show you that, that process. Um, in the inside, I also have a flower stamped on the bottom here. And 
we're going to just grab a little piece of paper to put underneath here. Uh, and then if our stem goes down off, oh, look at that. Okay, so Kara said she she, she watches me and she sees that I hold my, my pad down a lot. And so she sent me this in the mail just today. I literally opened it up at like around five o'clock when I opened up my mail. And now it's like the ink pad stays really cool. So I'm gonna stamp this on the bottom right hand corner just to give me a focal image. Hi, Linda Freund from sunny Florida, woohoo. Okay, so that's what we have there. And then we also have this label. So again, that was from Quiet Meadow and there's a stamp that says, thank you for inspiring me. <laughs> okay, so that would be cool if it would fit in here, but it doesn't. And when it comes to sentiments, you guys, I know you have different sentiments at home that you can use, um, but I really liked having a thank you card. But I, I honestly didn't want to have the for inspiring me. Because what if you want to send it to somebody who didn't inspire you? <laughs> and you just need to send them a thank you card. So you want to mask it off, okay? So go back to the handy dandy post-it note. <laughs> and there's like the post-it part is on there. So you're masking over the for inspiring me. And now you're going to ink it up. The trick with this is you have to remember to take this off, okay? If you forget to take this off, bad news bears to you, okay? So you have no ink on that bottom part. And so now the trick is to line up. I'm going to put my head in here, you guys. I might You might see my head top. So let's see if I can get in here without doing it and stamping it straight. I'm just guessing, kind of. Um, so I'm just trying to stamp the thank you into that label. Oh, it's crooked. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> we try again. So put this back on. We're flipping it over. We're going to inky dinky do again. You got to remember to take this off. Now I'm going to look back and see how I did it wrong. The thank you, the T is down lower and it's all down low. Okay. Okay. I want to get my head in here without you guys having to see it, but I'm going to try one more time and go right there instead. <laughs> okay. You guys remember there's two sides. So you can flip over and hopefully, oh yeah, get it better. Okay, we take it. <laughs> um, the other thing you could do is try the back first to practice and then use the front. What happens is there's a difference. This has a more rough edge to it and this has a more rolled edge, but to the naked eye, you don't generally catch that or see that. You or I might catch that because we're stampers, but whoever you're giving it to most likely will not catch that. Okay, so when it comes, that's it for this um, ink. Then... We have this, the crumb cake mat, and it's hard to see it, but I promise you it's there. I used a crumb cake ink pad, and you don't have to worry where it's getting covered up, but I did take crumb cake, and I sponged it all the way. Sponges are retired. I, I, they retired the round circle sponges, but the sponge daubers are still available. And so um, I do use sponge daubers or sponges a lot, and... What happens is you just put a little ink on the sponge and what happens is it catches the raised image. And in the camera, I think you can see that it's kind of making the raised images stand up and it's making the paper slightly just a little darker. So now don't worry about the middle because you never want to add ink to, to a spot that gets covered up. It's just kind of like a waste of ink. <laughs> so. Is the white or vanilla? It's white. All four of these cards, you guys, are white cards. Um, and I coordinate, when I send you your envelopes, I coordinate your envelopes to be white or vanilla, depending on if you have white or vanilla in the card. And these are all white. All four of these cards we're doing tonight are white, not vanilla. Okay, so you can see the difference here. I didn't do the middle, so it's lighter and it gave like a little bit of darkness to the, the edge. And so that will help with some contrast with the card base. Um, oh, Ian said that this is crumb cake. So Kathy wasn't sure if you're referring to this, it's white. If you're referring to this, it's crumb cake. Thank you, Ann, for helping answer that. I appreciate it. Uh, okay, so uh, hi, Ethel King. Um, I think, oh, coloring. So let's talk about coloring. The markers that I used for this that are listed are some of the new blend colors, um, the soft succulent and pale papaya. When you buy blends, they come as a pair of a dark and a light color. 
And in this case, you could either use one or the other. It's too hard to do shading. So I think what I might have done is used the dark pale papaya, and then I used the light soft succulent. And because of the evening evergreen is a water-based ink, it works perfectly great with the alcohol markers. You always wanna use the opposite. So if you're using alcohol markers, you use a water-based ink pad. And if you're using um, like water paints, water colors, um, anything involving water for like a watercolor, like with blender pen, um, the blender pen, um, you where you're gonna be using water, then you wanna use a permanent ink pad uh, like stays on. Okay, so all I'm doing is adding a little bit of color to my leaves. Uh, there's such a small area that it is really hard to do any sort of blending with like two-tone textures, which are what these markers are intended and great for. But with this, you can just add a little dash of color with just one of each of them. So, okay, so that's it for the coloring. Now this is where you would go and die cut this or fussy cut it with your, fussy cutting means just using your scissors and cutting it. Um, but by the magic of TV, life is good and I have one done already and it's already taken care of. So we don't need this stuff right now. So let's move that there. So this is where the fun begins <laughs> with assembly. Okay, so this is our base and we can go ahead and in, insert our inside. So if you want to, you could always color this to match. Definitely something that is great to do. Um, I generally don't color my insides in when I'm doing an online with you guys. <laughs> if whoever wins this card can always color in if they prefer. Um, but I'm just gonna glue that right to our inside. Like that, okay. So what do we have here? Let's see what we can glue together without causing <laughs> issues. So these three can get glued together already. So we're gonna flip this one over and put adhesive. Now I did not pop any of these up, which is you guys are probably thinking that's really crazy or rare for me. I generally love to pop up layers like this, but I popped up the flower and I popped up this. So I left this as a background piece. Okay, so then I'm just gonna adhere this to my pale papaya. Thanks, Cindy. I'm glad you like this card. Think about all the different color combinations you could do. And I loved that it like showcased off, showcased off the designer series paper. Okay, so then this, just wiggle it till you get it centered nice. So that's gonna go there. So this, I'm not gluing this yet onto here because my ribbon tails are behind. So, but I am gonna go ahead and adhere this onto the crumb cake mat. And I'm gonna to try to center it, top to bottom, left to right. Okay. Hi, Patrice. So now people asked in class last night, well, what's the best way to do this? <laughs> like, let's, let's figure that out. But before I do that, what I wanna do is Stella this. It's easier to Stella this. You guys, my oh, this thing always does this to me. <laughs> I don't know why. I gotta like glue it or something. My Stella upstairs in my craft room had a blowout yesterday. Oh, I was so sad. It was actually Tuesday. And it was the hardest thing to do because when I squeezed, it wasn't, it needed to be squeezed, right? And then you never wanna squeeze Stella too hard because she has bowel, leaky bowel syndrome then. And so I had Poppy Parade on a block and she leaked into the Poppy Parade. And so I ended up with this puddle of cool Poppy Parade Stella Rific juice, but I didn't need all of that Poppy Parade. <laughs> oh, it was the hardest thing to do. I hemmed and hawed about it for 10 minutes. Like, do I throw it away or what? And finally I said to myself, just throw it away. <laughs> Stop hemming and hawing over it. But I hate wasting glitter. Oh my God. So Stella is a glitter pen and it's controlled glitter. So it doesn't go all over the place. And so I did, I wiped it off and I got rid of my Stella, my Poppy Parade Stella. My, she had a blowout. So anyways, enough about blowouts. Um, <laughs> poor Stella. Okay, so we've got some dimensionals here and I'm gonna flip. So how I would do this is I would put my dimensionals on the back. So I think I need to cut some of these. Look at you guys, I'm getting down to the nitty gritty bare bones here of my sheet and then I can grab a new sheet. So 
I'm gonna put a couple dimensionals on the back of my flower ensemble piece here and pick them off. And what we're going to do is attach the foliage. So this greeny one is coming out this side. So when I put this back here, it's gonna to stick to those dimensionals. So that one's gonna go back here. I can pull that so you can see it. And then this one is gonna be sneaky peeking out the left side like that. And it should stick because you've got dimensionals back there. Perfect, right? So now all of this is one piece or one unit and it needs to go onto our card here. Now it's already got dimensionals on the back of this, so I don't wanna add more dimensionals. So you would have kind of like two options. You could add some glue dots to the back, or if you like the liquid glue, I wouldn't do tape runner because it's all unevenness, but what I would do is just add a little liquid glue right up the center here and just, hi naughty Nancy. Just add some liquid glue, and then you're gonna be able to put this down. I put it more to the left side so it doesn't cover up all the designer paper. Oh, you know what I did do? I don't know if you guys can't see it here, but you see my knob on the top here? I actually cut that. This was so weird looking up there for me. <laughs> so I, I actually took my scissors and I rounded that off like that. I thought it looked better like that. <laughs> so that's why it was a little bit short. So this guy's now, Gonna come down the left edge of my frame like that, okay? Then what we have going on with this, this die is awesome because it has holes on the side. And because it has holes on the side, it allows you to put the ribbon through it. But before I put that ribbon down, I wanna put some tear and tape right through the middle to help hold my ribbon. So now that I have the tear, and I put it on the right side, perfect, okay. I'm like, did I put it on the wrong side? Now I'm going to kind of squeeze the end here and pull up on one side. And if you see my label is closer to the, the right side. So I don't need as much ribbon hanging on that side. So I'm going to leave it like that and then run that through the back. It'll catch that tear and tape. And then put that through the other hole. Now we have more on this side. So you can measure it to make sure you're good. I think that you had about six inches, so you should have some wiggle room. All right, now that you've got the ribbon taped, I did pop this up onto the green piece. So I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back side of my label on top of the ribbon. The reason I put the tear and tape is because otherwise it, the label would have been kind of floppy. Um, by putting that tear and tape, it helped that ribbon hold still. Okay, so I'm just gonna like set this here as a guide. This is gonna go something like that. Put it right like that. And then, now I have an eyeball, I can go and put that. I do have an eyeball, but I'm eyeballing it, is what I really meant to say. So that is going on like that. Now, I feel like I don't have enough room, ribbon. I need to move it over ever so slightly. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go a little bit more to the right and see if that will work better. Something like that. Hi, Chris Nebaum. Hi, Holly. Hi, Jody. Okay, so there we have that on our green strip. I feel like I lost, uh, I need another dimensional back there. Let's put one more right there. Hi, Sarah Simon. Okay, so that's going there. And then I also did pop up this whole entire green piece. So grab a couple more. Now, if you're not a dimensionalizer, um, you could glue all of this stuff flat. Yay, we finished the sheet of dimensionals, everybody. Woohoo! Okay, so we'll grab this one here and put that one there. Okay, so if you're not a dimensionalizer, you could definitely put stuff all flat. That works just fine. Uh, that one, will you put them right there? Okay, and then this is going to now go onto our card front. The green is slightly longer than the crumb cake. I did that on purpose. And then set that on here. And then now what we can do is put our tear and tape on the back and we're gonna put our tails behind. Now the green is popped up. So you don't wanna pull it so tight that it like pulls your ends down, but you can leave it a little looser and we'll get it wrapped around there just perfectly. Um, you, some people in class last night put it behind the green. That works as well, but but I, I always like to put my ribbon tails behind the top, the bottom most layer. 
And so I'm not going to push really tight because I don't want to squish the green down. So it still leaves it that it's popped up a little on the sides here. And now I'm going to finish off my tear and tape sandwich with another piece of tear and tape on each ribbon. And then we'll peel that off. So, guys, if you ever have problems picking off the tear and tape, that's where the pick tool comes in really handy. Okay, so let's move some of these things out of the way. And then we're gonna finish off with some liquid glue right along the edge and a little in the middle. And now that goes onto our card front. Because we, we put a little color on, it actually helps to differentiate the base. So I know some people, how they, they don't like using a mat of the same color on the card base. I do that often enough. It doesn't bother me at all, especially if I'm embossing it. Um, and then when you add that little bit of color to it, it actually differentiates the base and the mat. So almost done, you guys. Not quite there, but we have some, we got to put our little butterflies on as well. So I got some stray ones floating around here that I'm going to try to use. Um, so I got one up here and then I got a small one over here. So these little brush, brass, brass, brush, brass, brass, brushed brass butterflies. I had a hard time saying it last night too. They are part of the flowering tulips suite of products, but I love pulling in different embellishments from different suites in with these classes. Um, so well, there you guys go. Um, not too hard, I don't think, when you kind of see the process for putting it together. Lots of layers going on. Um, foliage on the side, and then like it really, if you have a really pretty designer paper, like put a rectangle of it and put some foliage on the side if it's like a flowery print. So we got some Stella action going on. So we did good. Um, we got our inside finished. So I like this one. <laughs> Oh, so there we go. One done. Woohoo. Okay. So we will set, where are we going to set things? This off to the side here. And we'll put our first card over there. You guys like it. Woohoo. Okay. This one is going to be the next one. It's the evergreen. This was Diane's favorite card last night. She loved the layout. So I cased a card from... Oh my goodness, I, somebody, the layout is what I cased. I didn't case like the colors or the, the stamps or anything, but I cased the layout. Hi, Judy Bobo, which all I did was this section and then this DSP attached to it. That's what I loved it when I, I got a swap card and it had the, that layout. I'm like, oh, this is super cool. So this is the next card that we're going to be working on. So it's Evening Evergreen mixed with freesia actually and soft succulent some and pale papaya is in here so hi feline watching the replay later <laughs> okay so um the color combination here we pull in some brass butterflies as well um i figured out last night where the just for you came from um this one actually i didn't mention it earlier but it actually uses the eden garden dyes so this dye here is from these two are from eden garden and then this guy right here is from potted succulents Oh, your date nights are always good, Judy. I love it. <laughs> so let's see what you guys have in your kits. So a little different than a traditional card because of how the base works out. It's all about the base. No trouble. So this one is, let's see here. This guy has to go over here. Hang on, you guys. I like to put things back where they belong. So that guy's got to go there. Those are my little recipe cards. And then this one is right here. So... Our evening evergreen base is seven and a half by four and a quarter. So seven and a half scored at five and a half by four and a quarter. That top flap folds down and just burnish your edge here. So yeah, this one is so cool too. If you have a really pretty designer series paper that you have a front side that you want to see. And then if you have a back side that you want to see and um, just a picture frame, this is the scalloped contour dies. And then this is just a piece that fits right in the inside of it. Thanks for sharing, Arliss. Okay, so you should have that. 
This is from the Eden Garden, as well as your two. This is the Shimmer in Color Vellum. It's like stare. I don't know if we're going to catch it, but this is the shimmery vellum. And it's very shimmery. I don't know if you catch the shimmers. It's like Stella on steroids is what we call that one. So we've got those two in your kit. Here's your little scallop contour for your top. This little piece fits right inside. And then this guy right here, in case you were wondering, I looked through all the catalogs, <laughs> or the two of them, to find the perfect label to fit inside this label. And I found it. It was in potted succulents. So that's where this teeny tiny little label comes from. Um, yeah, I know, Judy. I, I hate covering up both sides of the paper. This is the evergreen checked window pane ribbon. This is part of the flowering tulips suite as well. Here's your designer paper. It's just five and a quarter by four with your wood grain on the one side. So that'll go here. Oh, I have an extra leaf for some reason. And then your mats are four by five and a quarter for the freesia and three and 13 sixteenths by five and one sixteenth. Okay, so that's what you guys should have in your kits along with two genial gems and two butterflies. That's what we got going on with this one. So let's glue two things because we can. <laughs> um, these two things need to get glued. You have to be very careful though. <clears throat> you do not want to glue this whole thing because you will glue it down. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I would recommend putting the glue on this one. So just put a little liquid glue there and then this one also will be able to glue that down once we have this. So there, there is no right or wrong. Like the middle part gets covered up. So I'm looking at my edges to see which orientation the flowers look like they're going. That one's going down, but those look like they're going up. So I don't want to put it this way because then those will be, <coughs> excuse me, upside down. So we're going to go like this. <coughs> excuse me, I got Kermit the Frog going on. So this one goes right on here. So you have your eighth inch all the way around and kind of sneak it up just a hair, just like that. Okay, so that's one layer. Then your scallop contour die that goes on here flat. This is another card where I left the bottom part flat and popped up this front part. So, so now you can see those really pretty flowers around the edges. And then when you flip this up, you've got your designer series paper on the back with the wood grain. Okay, let's do some stamping then. So we're gonna need our evergreen ink back and <laughs> Oh, I hate stamping in little labels like that. <laughs> I would generally stamp it and then die cut it, but I'm showing you it's possible to do it. So we're gonna do it. So we need just for you and then our flower, flower, and evening evergreen. So let's get that guy back open. We don't need this right now. The flower. <clears throat> so I'm gonna bring this piece of paper back and for inky dinky do. Oh, I love it. I don't have to hold it. Okay, so that's gonna go on our inside. You know what? I put it on the left side, just the way the orientation of the flower was because I wanna put a B on here. Don't be afraid to go off the edge. I don't wanna put too much of it onto the white, so I cut off a little bit on the side and that's okay. So there's our left side and then this one is going to go so it's really hard this stamp just barely fits on the d block and you have to hold the d block at an angle <laughs> which it takes a little bit getting used to it learning to look at the stamp okay so then this one's gonna go about here and then the just for you that comes i showed you guys a set earlier it's called celebrating you and actually last night we had cat was in class and she made it into an anniversary card and she put happy anniversary in it. So she's giving it to her husband next week for their anniversary card. Okay, so there's our flower power and then we just have our little label. So here's my trick, <laughs> you guys. You know how I didn't succeed on the first try the last time. So because of that, I'm gonna flip this over and practice on the back side first and see how I do. Okay, I was down a little low. <laughs> so now, see that would have happened on the front side. So, <laughs> Thumper, yes, from Bambi, flower. Okay, oh, I hope this is good. 
oh, it's good. It'll work for me. Okay, so you, so I practiced on the back side. Was a little crooked. Got it right now on the second try. Woohoo! Good. All right, that's it. It for the ink. Yeah, Bambi must have played a <laughs> Bambi Thumper <laughs> Flower must have played an influential role in my life too growing up. Okay, so the fact that I remember Flower. Okay, so coloring here. Pale papaya is what I used for the center of our flowers. So we got these two, and then there's some little guys. Um, nope, there it is right there, and then that one. So that was it for the pale papaya for the soft succulent. Now, there is a little bit more wiggle room here. So if you want to practice your blending, what you could do is use the dark blend on your veins and then the bigger ones it's kind of hard on the smaller ones but i mean you can do a little um and then we've got some here so i just take the darker one and i draw on the dark center vein and then what you'll do is you'll take the light blend oh i missed one right there haha -ha. so you don't have to do them all but when you take the light blend then you go over the whole thing and i spend more time in the middle area where I drew the darker line just so it blends out better and that's how you get the two-tone and you can see it more pronounced on this card at the moment you can see my centers are a little darker than my outsides so I'm taking these off for a second so that I can see here so oh my gosh you guys generally I have the magic of TV done for you so you don't have to watch me color but um, I'm going to use the thin end here and start from the bottom and then do a little here. So if you guys stamp your inside, you could definitely color your inside too. But that's where I'll leave it for whoever gets this card to decide if they want to color it or not. So I used that brush tip at first. It was easy to use that when you have a bigger area. But then as you get to the smaller surface areas, it's easier to use the, I call it the fine tip. All right, now I need to put these back on because I can't see. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, let's see here. And then when you think you're done, you have to look over it really closely because you miss a leaf. There's always one hiding. So oh, see, right here, you guys, I missed that one. <laughs> it's a big one. So let's get him right there so we'll put a little darker in the middle <laughs> see i completely missed that big one right there and then we're going to follow up with the light right here can you guys believe tomorrow is friday i just am blown away so i have two weeks of my leave of absence done already halfway through it at this point i don't know where i would have found time to work <laughs> with all the stuff that i got done um there's our green is done and then i've got the freesia going on so I did the same thing with the freesia. I did the center area darker. So I drew out my lines. You can see I didn't leave them all the same, like I guess height maybe, or I didn't drag them all out the same. And this one, I'm just gonna draw some lines like that and that one too. And then those little guys though, I'm just gonna color them all light. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my brush tip here though. And then with the brush tip, I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here. So I'll hold it up just so you can see where I'm at. I did the dark first. And now I'm going to follow up with the light. And when I do the light, I'm going to make sure I capture, I capture the dark. And it helps to blend it so that you don't have the lines from the dark. That's what these blending markers are all about. The thing that I love the most about markers like this is they do not leave streaky lines. I hate coloring stuff like this with water-based markers because you get the line action. And I, I just love how blended this looks. So these little guys are gonna be a pain in the butt, I promise. They'll go fast though. Just wiggle around and get the little petals done. Okay, so halfway here and we'll go to this side. I always, I'm a righty, so I always gotta turn the paper so I get the angle on it good. Okay, just this little bit here. So. Oh, two weeks already, Cindy. I know. I don't know. Like, I have two more weeks to go. And then March 7th, I'm back. And I gotta tell them what I'm doing. <laughs> so, okay. Now, 
Let's do a little gluing. So we'll do this and this. What is the flower stamp, Carla? It's from this set. Um, this one right here. It's called Blessings of Home. This is the super sweet from the Heart and Home set, which is we're using this flower on the next card, and this flower is this card. So it's actually this the suite of products. So super cool. So this suite had two bundles, this one and then the other one. Um, three. Okay, so you guys, these are all some of the new in colors. I'm so excited because they're not retiring yet. They We have another year with them. <clears throat> okay, so this one goes in here. And this one goes on the center here. Oh, you know what I did? It's hard to see it, but I did it. I blended some ink along the edges here. I didn't even see it till right now. Let's see, what did I use, crumb cake on that? Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna try not to get glue on my sponge. So, I just frosted the edges, so I'm gonna use a different area of this. I gotta do this a little differently, right like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. And we're just gonna put a little green color along so faint and subtle that you hardly will even see it but just enough to know it's there okay and you just go around the old you guys we didn't even catch us in class last night because nobody asked me for a sponge with green ink all right there we go okay dirty sponge now I can glue this down and I'll show you guys a close-up of what that looks like so you can kind of see along the edges, it has a little bit of green color along the edge. It just softens it, brings the white so it's not so stark is what I call it. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Oops. So I had ink on my fingers. And so if you get ink where you don't want it, just take your ink eraser and get it off. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So then... We're gonna glue this on the inside, like so. And let's see if we shut that, if we see the purple. Oh no, perfect, okay. All right, so now you have some ribbon. This is that window pane checker ribbon. What I used is tear and tape across this span and I put it right down where I want the ribbon to go, like that. And that's why I put that flat, is because I wanted to be able to glue this ribbon down with my tear and tape. So that's right there. I know, Penny, that sand eraser is awesome. Okay, then this gets glued onto our little soft succulent. So this is from Eden's Garden Dyes, and so is that. Yeah, Jean, I love sponging the edges too. I just, let's see which way that goes. I think that it adds so much to it. Um, this way, we're gonna do it. Oh, <laughs> hold that this way. Okay, then I think before I put this down, I'm gonna grab, no, Linda, Stampin' Up! doesn't carry the ink eraser. Um, I get that off of Amazon. So you can buy them on Amazon. They're like three bucks. So um, I do have them for sale, like in my studio, like I buy, like I do, I buy five of them at a time because they sell five at a time. And then if you're in class and you want one, they're just three bucks. So I do it as like a little add on per perk bonus. So if you have an Amazon account, you can always look on Amazon and, and get them. Um, they're great for getting ink off of places where you don't want ink. <laughs> All right. So then this little guy goes here. Like, so Cheryl Thomas, she just got some card classes in the mail. I just shipped them out today and she needed an ink eraser. So she sent me the three bucks for it and I put an ink eraser in her package. So Cheryl, your package got mailed today. Woo -hoo. Okay, so then these little guys, what we're gonna do is put a couple glue dots. Oh, that way. We're gonna put a couple glue dots on the front side of them. And then we're gonna stick them Ooh, get on there. We're going to stick them. Get off my nail and get on there. <laughs> we're going to stick this one off to the side here. And then we're going to put this one. They're the same leaf. One just goes down and one goes up. It's going to go something like that. 
And then I see that that little bit needs to get poked out right here. There's a little piece that got missed. And let's just see how that looks. Something like that will be good. Okay, then what I would do is put a couple more dimensionals behind here. Yeah, I mean, the ink eraser works good for the most part, but sometimes you will not get it all off. It does help to reduce the amount of ink, but what happens is if you go, you keep going in a little circle, sometimes it starts to wear the paper and you have to be careful then because then you'll see a whole kind of, or a divot where that is. Okay, so then this is gonna go right on here. I'm trying to get my two squares to be seen. Good, Cheryl. I'm, I'm, you're gonna have, hopefully your package gets there soon. And then I'm gonna take my ribbon scissors and I'm going to trim this one at a diagonal that way. And then this one goes this way. Okay, so I should have done that before I, <laughs> I put my foliage down, but I didn't. So we're gonna sneak it in here now. So there, so trim your little tails at, you know, trim them at an angle. And what else do we have? We got some, oh, the other thing I did on here for Stella is, let's see if it opened, good. I did Stella this frame. You wanna add a little bit of glitz to the outline here on the, <laughs> the scalloped edge here. That can go, it just adds a little spadazzly. And then in your kits, then you'd have your genial gems and more butterflies. So, I have little guys. Oh, right there they are. So you have a big one. Where did I grab that one? Gonna, they're stuck together. Okay, so I have a big one and a small one for you in your kits. So let's grab this one. Oh, and he's gonna go there and put him there. And then the Genial Gems are from the annual catalog. And they are with the hand pen suite of products. And so I'm gonna use this thing. For that and so you can pick it up and one goes on the end there and one goes there so had I centered that a little bit better it would be a little bit more um you still had your flowers Angela perfect yes you can um the one thing that I caution sometimes about selling the flowers is it might get them to bleed and if they don't bleed that's perfect and I don't know if they you could just lightly go over them. Try not to hit the other colors and that will be good. So there, perfect. Hi, Mary Bowman. All right, so we've got some of these guys need to find their home over here. And you got right there. Okay, and we got another one done, you guys. So, finish card. Um, just when you open it then, you can see the designer paper up here. If you wanted to, you could add another strip of designer paper right on the inside flap here, if you like, so. Oh, I'm not done. There's a bee. A bee. Hang on. Let me show you the bee. So, uh, there are three different bees in the stamp set. And I loved the idea of one bee faces this way, one bee faces this way, and one is like wings wide open. <laughs> so, this little dude right here, <laughs> cinnamon cider ink, and he's like hanging out on the flower. So, there you go, put your bee, if you've got the set, put your little bee on the flower. He's like getting his honey made and he's figuring out how much honey he's gonna make. Okay, all right. Melody loves it, woohoo Melody, I'm glad you love it. Okay, so now we're done with our bees and we might need that on the next card. So woohoo, we got two done now. All right, so let's do a little washy washy. Thanks, Marsha, I appreciate that. We're gonna clean him off. And you guys, it's always a good idea to get these clean, otherwise you get ink on your projects. And we're done with all of these. I got this class again on Saturday. So, oh, Susan, I see your name just popped up. I got your celebration, celebration cards in the mail today. Um, so you'll be getting your package, sweet. Oh, he's collecting his pollen. Yes, good call. I love it, Penny. That's exactly what he's doing. Okay, so let's move these on out. And this one is a little bit in depth, you guys. So we're done with this and done with that. And we need 
this and this and a drink of water and let's look at the card yes so it's a bit of a fun fold and um let's see what we got okay let's put this guy over here all right oh you guys like it i'm so happy you like it okay all right you guys lots of bits and parts and pieces so pull up the sleeves for this one all right so this is how it looks i had to pull in cinnamon cider and the night of the navy <laughs> and when you open this up it goes like this and like this and then you have your inside with the little bee okay so this one i love this one I never knew that cinnamon cider and navy looked good together until <laughs> this card came along. Okay, so you guys, the bees, I was gonna show you this real quick. Nope, um, you're wondering if where the bees. So there's that bee, that bee, and then that bee. That's where the bees come from. Okay, all right, so what do you have in your kit? <laughs> Lots of stuff. And I accidentally started to glue this card and um, I realized later that it was my um, online class card. And so I'm like, oh, dang it. So I left the glue on and I put it on the plastic wrapper. So you guys should have a greenie, a greenie and a greenie. So three greens. And I don't know, I accidentally cut myself a whole set extra. So I don't need that. So we'll put that on that pile. You have, this is from the nature's harvest dies. So you guys will have one of those little labels. Now I did not give you the die cut piece, right? We talked about that at the beginning of class. This is so specific to this that I'm like not gonna cut it out and die cut it and then you guys not use it so what I did is everybody got a piece of paper about this size right here so this is in your kit it was the first thing in your envelope in front of the whole card kit stuff um so Anne might need the b stamps now I love it <laughs> so this is what you guys got you guys can see my magic of tv I've got mine done I'm gonna still show you how to do it so don't worry about that you also have a little strip of the denim de denim ribbon uh, this piece right here is for the top and there's two white mats. You guys don't get confused in class. It happened to two people last night. They interchanged the two pieces. There's a smaller white one that mats onto the cider, which goes on the front of the card. And then there's a larger white that is your mat for the inside. So don't get them confused, please. Make sure you keep the top one with the cinnamon cider mat and then your bottom one somewhere else. Then you have my favorite designer paper from that pack right here. The light doesn't get dark. So, so pretty. That goes here. Then you guys have, a, you know, your white for your stamping. You'll have this embossed piece. Now, that's the Hive. That's the Hive 3D embossing folder. And I already have that done for some reason. That's the same piece as that one. So, we'll use that one instead. And then you guys have your two kind of mats. So, the one folds up like that, and then this one folds in half. And, okay, so that's it for burnishing. So let's move, get some of our pieces put together so that we can have less in the way. So, <laughs> I let this air dry. So when you guys let liquid glue air dry, it becomes tacky. So it's like, it becomes like a glue dot is what it does. So I didn't want to waste it. So I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna let it air dry, put it on the plastic, and now I'm just gonna re-glue it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what happened on that one. So that is cinnamon cider with the hive embossing folder. Yeah, Susan, the, the denim ribbon is so pretty. It makes really pretty bows. So you've got the five and a quarter by four mat. That goes on the inside, just like this. Okay, so far so good. Then you have your piece of designer paper and you have this blue arm. I call it the arm. And so we can get those, both of these two pieces glued down. Okay. So that and that one. And this one, you might look at your bees to see which direction they're going. They're all going all over the place. Like that one's going this way, that one's this way. And they're just... So they're all over the board and bees go everywhere and in circles. So <laughs> don't worry about it too much. But that goes on the front here like that. And I'll move you down just a hair. Okay, that goes there. And then this one, 
Now this opens this way. So all I do is I put this flat and we're just going to center this on top of the cider piece like this. Trying to center top to bottom, left to right. And so try to get it straight. <laughs> okay, so that's, now we have our, our flappies going on. Now, this mat right here that goes with your cider, the only, th oh, that's my inside, haha. -ha. It's not my inside anymore. Um, let's see here. It's too small. So I confused them in my own <laughs> card making <laughs> the other, like when I made these kits. So this one is the smaller one. It goes on the top of the cider. And I'm gonna use this one instead because it's already done. And then I can use this piece for something else in my future. So I'm gonna re-glue this. But what I did to this before I'm gluing it, you can see there's blue. You can see there's blue around the edge. And so you'll take your sponge dauber with ink and just sponge the edges, just like I did on that green on the other card. So once you've got that sponge, that's all that needs to get done with this piece. So we're going to put, so Arliss learned that about the glue today. Funny you had to use this glue. Yeah, it, it makes it like a glue dot. And so you saw I could just pick it off of the plastic. Had I put that glue wet on the plastic, it would have smeared all over. But because I put it down after it had dried, it was more like a glue dot. Okay, so now this piece is going to go onto our cider piece. And I have to be careful. It's not going to slip and slide like it always does because I've got that tacky glue on the back. So we're just going to try to make sure it's straight to begin with. And then this now can go onto our card front with a little more. So many layers, you guys. Oh, I love my layers. Okay, so now this goes on here. Now again, if you're interested, now that you've seen the third card, that you want these card kits, I don't stamp for you. So you need stamp, you need inks, and you need um, adhesives to complete your cards. Oh, man, oh, frights. Hang on. Oh, it's still wet. Good. All right. The ribbon. <laughs> you guys, nobody stopped me. <laughs> Good thing I caught myself. There's a little tab here. It's a little tabby. Okay. So how we do that is tear and tape. So grab yourself two pieces of tear and tape. Hi, Brenda. And it's on the left side. So that's this side. So now it's the right side. So we're going to put a piece of tear and tape here. And it's just a little bit in. And then I'm going to put another piece of tear and tape. And then you're going to make your little loopy so that it's like maybe, a, I don't know, a half inch, three, three eighths of an inch, maybe something like that. And then I'm going to grab one more piece and put that down so that I made a really big tear and tape sandwich. Okay, good. I'm glad you guys like that tip about the glue. Okay, so now <laughs> this is still tacky here and it's a little wet. So I'm going to put that down and try to get it. It's really sticky though now. So you really can't wiggle, wiggle with it. Okay, so there. Okay, don't forget your little tab here. It's just a little accent piece, you guys. A little bit of little, little fun. It's like a little tab to open it. <laughs> okay. All right, that is where we're at. So <laughs> we might do stamping now. Like that was that was a lot just to get that, that all put together. So the stamps for this. So we have the Miss You. The Miss You, Miss You comes from here. In class though, people wanted, they liked the thank you. The thank you comes from there, right there. Thank you is happy and heartfelt. So that fits in there nicely. Um, that's what I would do. I think I want to make this a thank you card because this is going to be a thank you for somebody who watches me that's going to win this. So we're going to go to our inks and get our Misty Moonlight. And just so you guys see, the, the Miss You comes from the set, but the thank you came from somewhere else. The Stay Wonderful comes from the B set. Okay, same thing here, you guys. I'm going to flip over and I'm going to stamp my back first to see how it works. Oh, God. Okay, that was nice. Very nice. So then we're going to put that one there. Let it sit for a second. God, very nice. Done. Um, inside. What did I do on the inside? Let's look at this one here. I think I put stay wonderful. That's okay. Like, I'm good with that. Let's do it. 
<laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, we go with it. Okay, so that's this piece right here. And if you're not sure, you know, you should have that one glued down. So then you can always double check that one. So this, I wanted to do this day wonderful. What, what else is in here? Oh, no, no, no. You're the nicest. You're so nice. Let's do that. That is, oh, it's just barely going to fit. I love it. Love it. Love it. Let's see if this block will work right here. And, oh, oh man, it's too little. Okay, hang on. We got to get ourselves a D block because I think I want to do you're the nicest because that's perfect. It says, thank you. You're the nicest. And they have this little paper pumpkin block that's not being used. So we'll, we'll put that down. So Misty Moonlight Ink, even though this is Night and Navy, I went with Misty Moonlight Ink. Okay, so... Well, we're not practicing. We're going to go straight for it because we got a second side. But that was perfect. Okay, so now we can put another B on here. So I wanted to put another sentiment because then it's really cool when you have your little B kind of like nesting on your sentiment. Like he's just ready to land on it. Oh, I didn't stamp it good. <laughs> Do you guys, does that happen to you? <laughs> Uh, it just doesn't happen every time to me, but we're going to get our B better that next time. I didn't press hard enough on the top left side of him. So we're going to put him, give him one, two, three seconds. Boom. Okay. He was a little troublesome there for a moment, but we got him. Okay. Then let's glue that so it's done. Yes, Hilda Nell, I love, okay, the cider and the, the Night of Navy. Now, the sad thing is that, you guys, cider is a retiring in color. It's going to be soon while supplies last because, you know, technically it goes till May 3rd, but when they run out closer to the end of the catalog period, you're not going to get it. So if you are wanting this misty moonlight bumblebee, magenta madness, just shade or cinnamon cider, now is the time to get that stuff. Okay. So we've made it this far, <laughs> okay? Now we have to do this flower. So the flower is the monstrosity of this card. Let's put this here so you guys can see what we got. The block ink is so big, so I like to do the upside down inking then. So what you're gonna do is flip the misty moonlight over and inky dinky do your flower. I think that's it. Oh, we're not done with Misty. We're close. So now what you can do is stamp this onto that piece of paper that you had. So everybody, I will miss Misty Moonlight too, Susan. We're going to have to have a little um, funeral. <laughs> a little funeral for all of our in colors. Oh, you know what, you guys? I have an in color retirement party. That's what I do. I celebrate and send them off in a good way. So that um, is the end of April. And I, I do five cards featuring all the five in colors. It's going to use Batik Boutique this time. Um, okay, perfect. So as long as we're at it, this little guy right here needs a little daubering. So I did go around the edges. Thanks for sharing, Melanie. <laughs> it just popped in that you shared it. So you guys, it's so random. I don't know how Facebook chooses comments as they come in or how it works, but <laughs> I see it now. <laughs> so, all right. So we're just sponging the edges of that. Perfect. Um, we got to color this flower now. So um, just, this is what the flower is going to end up looking like. And it's so pretty, but I did not I wanted to cry with the thought of having to color this with blends. That just did not excite me at all. It actually made me sad. <laughs> so I'm like, how can we color this without blends? And I had gotten a card from Jay Shante, and she had this flower, and she used daubers. So that's why I was like, okay, well, let's do that. So so saffron is the yellow, and there we use a Q-tip. It's such a small little area that it would not work to use a dauber. So this little guy, <laughs> the end is getting demolished, but it still works, there's a little ink in there. When you go and dip your Q-tip into your ink pad, you don't have to push really hard, um, and you can practice off to the side, but what you're gonna do is use your Q-tip and add the yellow first. It really made sense to do the yellow first. Your favorite today, oh God. Um, I love this one a lot. Um, 
I would have saved this one for last, except for I love purples and grays, which is what the next card is. So that's why I saved the purple and the silver for last. Um, I don't think there's any more yet. Oh, this one. Whew. Okay, so this card, this flower is very deceiving too. When you think you're done, you have to look around and then you find more. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the Q-tip action. Now I would go to the um, pear pizzazz. So that's that. And when you're doing this, we used the ink more on the side. So I don't know if you can see what we did in class tonight. We ended up with more ink on the side than over here. And this, this sponge dauber is permanently pink. It's up, That's what happens with daubers is they, they change color and then they never go back. So if you're uncertain about it, like practice off to the side first. But what you're going to do is you're just going to add some green onto your leaves. You have to be careful because you don't want to blend the blue ink and the green too much. So you don't want to keep going over the same thing over and over. You just want to add little pops of color. If you are a person that cannot stand being outside of the lines, this might be very difficult for you. This is like abstract. <laughs> oh, you're not going to keep it. Now, if you want it in the lines, you might find a different way to color and that's okay. I just did not want to have to go through the work of coloring this with blends. It would use a lot of ink and I wanted something fast and easy. I didn't want to spend 20 minutes coloring this flower. That's truly what I had in my head. So, so the sponge looked, I mean, so honestly, like this is what it's going to end up looking like when it's all done. And you know, it's doesn't need to be exactly perfect 110% in line. Okay. So there's green and yellow. Next is blue. So he's dirty. We're going to set you there. So blue, you have a little more wiggle room because your petals are a little bit bigger in surf surface area. With ink, always, it's always better to go lighter and you can always add more ink. So kind of watch where your dauber is going and try to stay within the lines and don't stress about it if you don't. So as I'm going, I'll try to pull this up so you guys can see I'm working my way around the flowers, turning my paper as I go, trying to stay contained in the petal I'm trying to color. Okay, so I got my big and done. Now I'm going to do this area over here, trying to avoid my yellows and my greens. Having control and knowing where you're putting the color and tipping the dauber on the side helps so that you're not, I'm, it's hard to see it, but I'm coloring this at an angle. I'm not going straight down all the time. I am capturing the sides of this. So like I'm holding it, I don't know, at an angle like that versus going flat like that. I don't know if you guys, it's hard to see it from down here, I guess. All right, so then keep working your way around. Again, adding more color where you think it needs it. <laughs> Praying that you don't color things that don't need coloring. <laughs> Crossing your fingers and your toes as you go. And we're gonna get these little guys up here. It's fun coloring with sponge daubers. <laughs> That's what I'm telling myself, right? Okay, and a little bit more there and there. Oh my goodness, I'm wiggling in my seat and doing a happy dance. So Penny says that she won't be able to color this with a dauber. And that's exactly what I said when I first started, you guys. If you're not the type that can't do the coloring like this, grab your markers, color it the other way you want to. But that is how I did it for this card. Just so you guys can see a different way to color. So... If you're done, when you're done, your options are if you have the big die, uh, the die does cut it out really nicely. It cuts it out. So Magic of TV, mine's already die cut. Um, otherwise, you could take a scissors and cut it out. Now, if you don't have this exact stamp set or stamp, you can find something else, hopefully, in your stampin' arsenal that would work, okay? 
I'm hoping you do. I know that you guys like things to match exactly, but I love when your creative abilities come out and you find what you have in your plethora of stamps. Maybe not plethora, but your, your vault, your stamp and arsenal of something that you have that would work. So this guy's good. We're going to put, we're going to put him over here on the side. So doilies. We need, you have a cinnamon doily. And now I gotta find where I put my doilies. Doilies are right here. So in your kit, you have a cinnamon doily, cinnamon cider. And people in class were like, well, how come you see more of yours than, like you can see a little bit more peeking out. So what I did, I actually, I cut my doily in half that way. Don't be afraid. <laughs> so. That's gotten half, and now it's gonna be able to spread out a little bit. Flipper that over. Oh, Jeannie, yes, she says she has the friendly flamingo flower. Perfect. Good. You don't have to have the same stamps that I have, unless you absolutely love the stamp set and you wanna buy it, go for it, buy it. But if you're like, I'm good, I don't need that stamp set, I could work with something I have that is a phenomenal concept as well. So I love it, Jeannie, that's perfect. So I'm putting the dimensionals on the back and then I'm looking at my card to see which way this goes, like that. And then I'm gonna take one doily and attach it. So I want, like I can pick how much I want to see of it. And I'm gonna put it right about there. And then this other one comes out this side over here. So you can see that by cutting it, it allowed me to have that wiggle room to have more of it showing. Now though, I'm done with dimensionals. I don't need more. Lovely as a tree, perfect. Lovely as a tree, perfect. I love it, love it, love it. Um, so now that I have all the dimensionals on here, I don't need more dimensionals. So I'm gonna actually use liquid glue where my doilies are and then we're gonna flip this because that flower goes that way. And now that goes on to our card front. I'm twisting it till I get it about where I want it. It goes down a hair, like that. Okay. I am trying not to need the big flower stamps that I do have the honeybee home. So yeah, so so I, it's really funny. I actually, if I had to pick one of these stamp sets, not this one, if I had to pick between these two, as much as I love the bees, Melanie, I do love these bees, I actually would pick the stamp set over this one because I love the words and these two images. You are a real blessing to everyone around you is a phenomenal saying to have. Um, have a perfect birthday is so pretty too. And then these are so pretty. So I'm not trying to sell me with more stamps, Melanie, <laughs> but like I, I wish these bees would be in here because I could have lived without all that. But the sentiments are still nice. And we use that one in the next card and we did use that and those flowers match. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to figure it out though. So there you go. So that doily hangs over slightly. All right. Now we're going to grab um, our pokey tool. You guys should have three greeneries. They are in the color of the pear pizzazz. So one, and then there's a second one that's slightly longer. And then a third one. And you just got to poke those little bits and parts out. So now... If you look at my sample here, one goes up this way, one little dude goes this way, and then this one, he's actually, he's longer than what I need him to be. So I am actually gonna snip off, a oh, I almost got my fingernail instead. I'm snipping off one of those little tails. Okay, so how do we do this? I am going to, hi Lisa Opperman, I'm gonna take my Terran tape, and take two pieces of it and put them on which side? That side. Put two pieces of Terran tape and we're going to attach our foliage to our tag that way. So this guy, this little guy goes first and he's going off that way. And then this one goes up that way, okay? And then the last one He's, so sometimes what I like to do is just set them on my sample and then I know exactly how I did it. So <laughs> I know I cheated there, you guys, but <laughs> that's what I would do. I would attach my 
I would attach my leaves to the back of my label. Then once I've got that done, I would take my dimensionals and now dimensionalize my tag. So this tag came from the Nature's Harvest dies. Oh, I'm freezing. Dang it. Hang on. See if I come back to you guys. I hope that it switches over. And we'll give it a second to see if it catches up to me. I think that we just... Um, I saw someone... Did anybody... EK? EK. So my top camera is still frozen. So and let's see here if it catches up. The internet. It has a little like um, exclamation point up there. So I'm just seeing if it'll come back and we'll keep her going. I'm hoping that it did not die on me. So let's go to here. Frozen! I know, Laura, it's frozen. I see that. So I'm going to take out the camera too and see if that helps. Oh, there it came back, but now I gotta connect my camera back to it and see once if this works. So let's see here. My hands are working. So, yep, perfect. Okay, you guys are coming back. I caught it right away. So I had to talk myself through it. I had to unlink my camera and relink it. So um, hopefully it's back now. My hands look like they're gonna work. So I'm gonna continue on my path here of my tag. So, all right, so you guys will have to watch me walk, talk through that. So I put my dimensionals on the back of my tag and now that is going to go, oh, I forgot to sell them. So we'll have to sell all them yet. So then this guy's gonna go right about here. I have it kind of so that you see the yellow and see some green. And we forgot about the Stella-ing. So we're gonna go back. I should have done the Stella-ing while it was flat because I hate, because if you get Stella now on this blue, it's gonna look, it's gonna smear it weird. Okay, so there's that. And then this one will come, we'll Stella that a little bit. If you want to, you could Stella your doily a little bit to add a little bling. Be careful not to catch your sponging though because if you catch the Stella with the sponging, it's gonna make it look streaky weird. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you guys, I talked you through it. We got through that. All right, we're almost done with our Mac Daddy of all cards here. So the embellishments for this one are the classic matte dots, which actually, this is the only card where I use the dots from this suite of products. And everybody got in their kit the three. So it comes with a big and two small. So everybody got the three of them. Um, so this, you know, it was really weird. I generally would have used the white ones with your with this, but the white would have blended in and I felt like the vanilla looked the best. So. We went with vanilla, and so I've got one of them up there. I got one next to it. The vanilla stand off and out better than the white. And this little guy, he's hiding. He's in there, I promise, he's there. But let me show you close up here. Thanks for sharing, Susan. <laughs> sharing, Susan. <laughs> so, I, so I used vanilla, and, the, and it's hard to see them, but the vanilla just shows off against the white. And it's kind of creamy like the cinnamon cider. And then there's, I put one little dude just hanging out down there. So when you open it, oh, he's on the B. Oh, well, I wonder if I put him just a little bit hair, a little hair up more so that he's not like right on the B head. Oh man, I lost the glue dot. Hang on. The glue dot stayed on the paper. So you got to scrape from underneath. We're leaving it right there on our B. <laughs> It's gonna stay there. Okay, all right, you guys, I know that card was a little labor intensive, but it was just, I had to. It was so much prettiness and fun with the cider and the navy and the misty for the, I mean, I didn't want the Night of Navy ink because I felt like that would've been too dark and it kind of contrasts the navy but pulls in the blues. It's so cool, I love it. So I hope you guys like this card too. All right, so we're on to our last card. Our last card has very little stamping, so it's not so crazy like this one. The other one has no, the other, this next card, you guys, you're gonna be amazed at how easy it is, but it's not easy because there's so many pieces. Okay, so that card goes over here. So we've got three of our four done. Oh my gosh, the lucky person that's gonna get that card is gonna be so happy. All right, so last is Purplicious. So let's get that one. 
need some water, guys. <clears throat> Gotta come up for air. I gotta show you the card that I cased for this card. So let's pull it out here so you guys can see what we're making. And then I'm gonna go get the card <clears throat> that I cased from. You guys might remember it. I got a birthday card in, from Julie Bierschbach. And it was so exquisite that I loved it. And I'm like, I need to make a card. And I was in the process of designing these cards. So let me bring in these stamps and ink and move out these. Okay. One moment in time. So... I got this card from Julie Bierschbach for my birthday, and I love it. I will never get rid of it. It will always be on display in the hive. Okay, because she knows I love purple and silver. And so this is the card that I cased, and I took lots of elements and designs from it, but I used different products and different colors. I mean, I used gray because I was designing cards for this class, and I'm like, how can I make this card into like a card for class? So this is Highland Heather. And um, she used the Expressions in Ink die cut here, silver embossing powder, and a little twig here. The twig is from a set that retired, a die set from the mini um, holiday catalog. She used Tasteful Textiles. She used Stitched Rectangles. She used this bow is so pretty. And I'm like, oh my God, we just have to make this card in class. <laughs> so oh, so I, that, this is the card I got from Julie. And um, she featured some expressions in ink, and then that's actually a celebration stamp set. So this is where I got the inspiration for this card. So I had to share that with you guys. Beautiful purple card. So I pulled in, like, the you can tell the layout is pretty identical. The things that are slightly different are designer paper and the vellum, and I did different die cuts. I pulled in the stuff from this, this suite of products, put a doily down there, and I got to show you guys how to do the bow, okay? Um... Use up my scraps. If you guys watched my tip Tuesday, I talked about using up scraps. That's what this little guy here is a scrap, okay? So let's do our stamping first because then we'll go right to town putting this together. So there's a little stamping. Um, in your kits though, you guys, you should have the embellishments. You'll have five iridescent rhinestones. My absolute fave from the mini catalog are these guys right here. So pretty, they go with so much stuff. So we'll be pulling them out. So you should have five of those. You should have your ribbon, like the open weave fresh freesia, and then the mesh. You'll have your um, fresh freesia. This is the bark embossing folder was used, just like she did. And so that's your mat. You have a white mat for your inside. You have a piece of designer paper for there, a designer paper. You have your sentiment strip. Now this also comes from the nature's the harvest dies that that one and that last one came from the harvest dies this is from the silver foil it's got that purple hue to it it's like a silvery purple so that's in your kit you have um this little fresh freesia and i cut mine out of this mat then you these mats all go so this is the vellum layering design so you can see it's the one that has words and that goes on our white and then on our freesia on our gray so you have this in your kit you have your little scrap, you guys. It's been sitting on my desk for six months. So you got a little scrap from me. I love it. And then your card base. And you can just fold that in half and burnish. Okay. You also, in your kit, you'll have the doily, which I forgot to put my doily in here. Thank goodness I have them right here. So you'll need, you have a basic gray doily. So that's what's in your kit. Let's just do a quick little bit of stamping. So this is is fresh freesia and that goes on the bottom. It's this squiggly, squirrely looking flower. It looks like a weed to me actually, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> so we're gonna stamp it first strength, second strength. So I just went first, second off and so it kinda looks like it's got two. If you don't like the look of the two, like that I didn't like that. So all you have to do is flip it over and you can just do one, and one looked really nice, actually. <laughs> okay, um, on this one, I think I put two for some reason. No, oh, I put one, and I put on the other side. Okay, all good. It all works. Okay, so you are a real blessing to me. So that's it for Freesia. Vicki asked, what do I, with, what, 
what, may I ask what you do with the invite postcards that are inside each envelope? Um, the invite inside each envelope. Are you, so Vicki, you're going to have, I am trying to understand your question. Are you asking about the invite postcards that Stampin' Up! gives a new demonstrator? Um, cause I use those as cushion or protection when I'm sending out cards. If I have embellishments on them, that invite postcard, I'll put it right on the front of it. And then it's meant to just get thrown away. It helps protect the front of your card. If I think um, you might be referring to that, maybe. Uh, if that's what it is, that's just um, a layer of protection, I guess. Um, like Arliss sent me a card today. Arliss, on her card, she had, she sent me this card today in the mail, and she had this cardboard from her designer paper, and she had that over the top. Um, the, the, the directions you write on the half in the kits you have on your desk now. Are you, oh, 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 okay. I get it. I get it. So, okay. When you sign up to become a Stampin' Up! discount shopper or demonstrator, Stampin' Up! sends you postcards. I don't know if they do it anymore, but they used to. And whenever I had anybody up that signed up on my team, they didn't want the business pack, they give it to me. So I would get receipts and catalogs and these postcards. So I have a plethora of these postcards. And what you can do, there's two uses that I know of. I mean, there's more, but there's two general uses that I have for them. One is I put them in front of a, a card for mailing. And then I confuse the heck out of the person that says they're invited to something and they call me and ask me, what are you invited to? Because you didn't write anything on the back. So that's one thing. So I don't generally use those a lot. But what I found a use for those postcards, they're my recipe cards. So I'll flip the camera down and I'll show you. So what I do is I cut off the part that says, oh, you're invited to a party, blah, 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 blah. And I leave the other side for me to write all my measurements. My They're my recipe cards. Um, they're... I don't include... So you guys get a... Whoever signs up for class from me gets a PDF tutorial from me. But I use my recipe cards when I'm writing the PDF tutorial so I don't have to look at the card and try to remember. Well, I'm designed... So I'll flip down here. So in here, these are my recipe cards. My chicken scratch. Okay? And you can see here I had something wrong and I had to fix it. And then I changed from gray granite to basic gray. And here I had... This is my chicken scratch. So instead of throwing away the postcards and never using them... I cut off the other half of the postcard, throw that away, and then I'm left with this piece of card. And for four years, I just use this instead of throwing this away. So every one of my, yes, that's, if I think that's what you're asking about, every one of these, these are my recipe cards that have my measurements, the colors, the inks, extra stuff that's used, how much ribbon. So when my mom helps me cut ribbon, I'm, oh, it's three inches, mom. That one's five inches of denim ribbon. Dauber is needed. Quiet Meadow dies. I think that's what you're asking, right? Yes. Okay. I think I'm not reading your comments as I'm explaining that. So you guys are probably all saying um, what I just said. Yeah. So I have stacks of these postcards. Um, Carissa uses index cards. She has a plethora of index cards from her just there. So she writes all of her stuff. So whenever I design a card, I always write this down. So I never have to remember anything for later. I am not good at remembering all those minute details. I'm pretty good at a lot of stuff, but not that kind of stuff. So I think we got that squared away. So that should be a tip Tuesday. What do you guys think? I'm going to do that as a separate tip Tuesday, writing down that in case you save your card, then you can have the, every card that I have, I have that in the back. So if I'm going to case my cards, I case a card. I already have the measurements that are written down from that card. So good tip Tuesday idea, you guys. Let's see if I remember it now. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. So let's practice this guy here. Oh, I stamped off the edge of the bottom. Okay. Let's move him up. So it's really hard when the stamp is so close to the edge of the block. It's hard to see the bottom. So let's try this again. Okay, good. Good, good. Good question, you guys. Okay, so that's going to go. Nice. You are a real blessing to everyone around you. You are. Just know that. Okay, so that is there. And then here's our 
have a perfect birthday. Long, skinny sentiment. Perfect for this die. Write it down, Linda Hall says. You know what? Chris is going to message me and she's going to say, don't forget about your tip Tuesday for the recipe card. <laughs> if Chris is still watching. I think she's answered the question, so she'll help me out. Okay. Hi, Trudy. Okay. Let's see if that one is good. Good. I can, I can live with that. Alrighty. 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 So, Inky dinky doos are done. Great to be fungal and not wasteful. Ha ha, frugal. <laughs> oh, Cindy, that looked like fungal, but it says frugal. <laughs> I'm like, what does that mean to be fungal? <laughs> All right, let's see here. Garbage. I gotta pick that up. All right, you guys, are you ready to rock and roll and put this card together? It is not as complicated. One close up look at this. <sighs> How many layers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 layers plus a bow. Okay. It's my wow card for you guys. I could not make this like this. I just loved it so much, Julie. I love your card a lot. So inside, let's do that. And then let's glue purple piece down. So when I glue down an embossed piece that is so rumply like this, I generally do a little bit more glue where if I have something flat, I just do an outside. Okay. Innard goes in first. So the colors we have here are the basic gray and the freesia. So here's that. And then here's this one. Now the bark, it's really hard to tell. There's no right or wrong, which is the top or the bottom. So there's that. Now doily is next. Let's put a little glue on the doily and get that down first. So you guys originally, I forgot to put my doilies down. I had to pull everything up and get my doily snuck in there. So this guy goes right about here. Cool. Then this designer paper, which has the greenie on the back, is going to go here. Pop it up with dimensionals. I am going to use some of these edges so that they're slightly bigger. And we're going to put eight of them on because I don't want any saggy, saggy middle syndrome. So we're going to do that and that. Okay, great use for the pick tool, you guys. I, every time Diane stamps with me, she is grabbing these tops with her pick tool. And yeah, I did three there. <laughs> so you can get about three of them. So great use for your pick tool. Don't forget to use it to take your dimensional backs off. All right, this one, I guess, look at how it's cut. Like that one has a little less bark and that's a little bigger. I might put that like this. Same width on the top and the left. So that's kind of what I'm going for here, right? So that's down. Now, people ask about vellum. How do you put vellum down? You can see through the vellum. So what happens is this area is covered up. So I don't care if I can see the glue through there. So I am going to, all these words are different, you guys. Some are going this way and some are going that way. So <laughs> there's no really wrong or right, except for like, I don't want it to be upside down. So um, I'm gonna put mine like this, but it's so small, you probably can't even see it. So again, I'm just gonna put glue on the bottom, right? Because you can't see it from the bottom. That's gonna go on to the white piece. So that's basic white with the, it's the layering vellum designs paper. Check to make sure now that you've got it together that it matches really nice. So if you need to trim a hair off, go for it. If it looks pretty good, leave it. And then once you've got that glued, flip this over and this now will get glued to our freesia mat. Yeah, freesia's growing on me. Um, I really honestly would have preferred to do Highland Heather, but when I was designing for this class, the paper that I wanted to use was freesia from the designer paper. So that's how it got pulled in freesia versus Highland Heather. And then this now gets liquid glue. And then that goes onto your basic gray mat. And now... The trick with this one is you've already popped up this wood panely piece. If you pop up dimensionals on this whole thing, it's gonna be going a little crooked. So, 
Oh, thanks, Marsha. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put dimensionals on this side, right? So the left side, and I'm going to put liquid glue on the right. So I'm going to flip it this way, and I'm going to put a line of dimensionals along the left side. And I might just do one there and one there yet. So dimensionals on the left, liquid glue on the right. So don't be, a, you know, if you would have done dimensionals, it would be doubly stacked on the other side. So now this, I'm looking at my sample. I'm going to put it right about here. All right, Stella up the, let's do the back of this, and Stella up your freesia. Whoa. Let's see if I can get this off without taking the whole thing. Okay, so put a little Stella power on your flower. Now, what I'm going to do, these two pieces, I'm gonna use mini glue dots. So this one goes down first, and I'm putting a glue dot right at the tippy bottom, and I'm gonna eyeball where I want the top to go. I'm not worrying about the bottom. I'm looking at the top, and I don't want it kind of over the top of my frame, so it's gonna sit in my frame a little more to the right than the left, and then I'm gonna grab a glue dot for the freesia one, and I'm gonna set that over the top of this, like that. Then, I didn't worry about gluing this top piece, right? Because I didn't want to know where to put the glue. So now that I have my foliages down, I can put a little liquid glue down and I'm not going to worry about it because it's going to be underneath where my foliage are. So I'm going to kind of pick this up and glue that vellum right where the foliage is. Now that's kind of positioned good. I did also this silver one. I picked it up and I put just the teeniest, tiniest little dot ever <laughs> if it came out there. Now I put a little dot on that one to help hold that. So Marsha, this is the heart and home class in February. It's not the monthly card class. This is called heart and home. Um, this little guy right here, I'm going to put up a dimensional behind him. The mini dimensional barely fits, but if you need to cut yours down, you can, but I'm going to put just that little mini white one fit in there perfectly. Yeah, so this is called the heart and home class, you guys. I have either one kit left or five kits left, depending on if I have one or one to five people tell me they are still wanting the kits. If nobody else tells me, I'm only making one extra and then I'll only have one extra. If four people come to me and say, oh my gosh, I really want these card kits. How do I get them? I'll make more, but I haven't made them yet. So I wouldn't be able to mail them tomorrow. It'd be next week. So now what happens is I popped this up with more dimension. You guys, there's so much height. This is like a 10 pound card, I would call this. Okay, so we're popping this up. And that is going to go onto this. And I'm going to center it top to bottom. Hi, Jean Benson. And I'm going to see once how long it hangs over just slightly. So I'm going to center that on my purple piece. Like that. And now my scrap that goes on the back, I'm going to add some glue to that. And then that is going to go here. And because I use liquid glue, I can wiggle with it a little bit. So I am just here have, um, I have just the little end hanging out here and here. Oh, Marsha, please. Okay, I got it. I see that you want the kit and an eraser, please. I would really love for you to also email me or text me or Facebook message me that you want a kit and an ink eraser. How do you guys, how do I prefer? Um, so, uh, huh, this is a good question. This is the million dollar question, Cheryl. Cheryl just asked, how do I like to know when you guys want to sign up for a class? <laughs> I will be honest with you. Um, what's easiest is an email because I can um, email and text because 
if I'm not by my class sign-up sheets, when you guys text me, call me, email, Facebook message me, I can mark it back to unread. I can reply to you and mark it unread, and then I know to come back to it so that when I get to my class sign-up sheet. So texting and email is awesome. I would say Facebook messaging works. It's perfect. But what happens for Facebook messaging is you get buried. As I get more and more, you go down to the bottom, and even though I mark you unread, I have to go down as I get messages. You guys, I get lots of messages throughout the day. I really do. Um, and then my Cards by Christine Facebook page is like probably last, which is makes no sense because that's my business page. But I don't, I don't always see when those notifications come in. Like instant messaging and texting and email come into my phone like that. So um, it either way, however you guys are comfortable is always what's best. And I love to talk on the phone too. <laughs> so if you have questions and need to go over things, it's always better to pick up the phone and we have a conversation for 10 minutes than to text 20 times back and forth. So I hope that answered your question, Cheryl. Um, like it, it really, it, it, you know, texting, Facebook messaging and emails are perfect. Like, and then um, the Cards by Christine Facebook page to get a hold of me first. Oh, that's another thing I was gonna tell you guys. If we're not friends on Facebook, you should really send me a friend request because I see your messages pop through on Facebook more than when we're friends as well. So you guys are always welcome to send me a Facebook friend request. I will gladly accept it um, in a heartbeat. So yes. All right. I hope that answered it. So scrapperoni. <laughs> it's like pepperoni, but a scrapperoni. Okay. So you guys, we're back to this right here. So this now goes flat. I promise. Like this was popped up. I'm not going to do any more popping. It's really popalicious on here. So we're going to put liquid glue now on the back of this. And then this is going to go on our card front. I have a little bit of the white sneaking out on the bottom here. And we got to get that to stick. Oh, I made a mistake. The liquid glue only needed to go in the middle. We need a dimensional right here. And we need a dimensional because we're hanging over the edge of glory and we need some support. So a little dimensional. Ah, now I got liquid glue there. It sticks eventually, but let's get that right there. And so what I mean is um, there's height here. And so we want a dimensional to help. Otherwise, it'll be flapping on the side there. So there, that helps support it. <laughs> it's like a broad, helps support it a little bit. Okay, there. Good. So you guys, this is what we, it's coming together. So we have rhinestones next. Let's put those on. So you guys have five rhinestones in your kit um, into the site and paying. Oh yeah, Barbara. Okay. So that's a good question too. So I have a website and you are more than welcome to go to my website and register for classes via my website, which is called Squarespace. Like, so when you go, it's cards by crispy. It's like a Squarespace. And that's if you want to pay with your credit card. Um, just know that if you pay with your credit card, um, I get an email instantaneously when you sign up and it's perfect. I see it. It comes through my email. I can log you that you paid. I can sign you up for class and life is good. And just know though, if you do pay via my website, it's, um, there's a convenience fee charged to your credit card, a small fee. It's usually like for every class about a dollar because that's what the credit card processing is. So I also give people the option that if they don't want to pay the credit card processing fee um, or the convenience fee of using a credit card, you can pay me in another form. There's so many ways to pay people electronically these days. I'm not trying to collect money via a cash option to like avoid taxes or the government. I'm helping you guys save money. So if you want to send money to me electronically via Zelle, PayPal friends and family, um, Venmo, cash app, Facebook pay, and not pay a convenience fee for using a credit card or send me a cash. Arla sent me cash in the mail today. I was like, okay, perfect, cash, cash is king. Or a check, you can, and just know that it's usually a lower price. It's the price published on my PDF schedule, okay? Whereas if you go to pay for it online, you're gonna notice that the amount is slightly different. It's because of the convenience fee. So um, however you guys wanna pay for it, I am perfectly fine with. I'm, I make anything work. I even downloaded a different app for somebody else to pay me through a different method. I, I'm good with that. I don't care. I'm like, I'm good with however it works for you guys. So, um, however, you know, so it all works. It all comes in the same way. At the end of the day, it goes into the bank account, right? <laughs> to pay for the kids. <laughs> so, um, so no, you're, so Barbara, your credit card doesn't charge you for using your credit card, 
but if you would pay me via a cash option, it would be $23 for this class, where when you pay on my website, it's $24. My credit card, co the company that charges, uh, it, they charge me a fee. And so I give a cash discount to people who don't use my website. I give the cash discount back to you if you pay. So you're not charged a fee, correct, but you are charged a higher price by buying it on my website. I hope that helps a little bit. So I know there's a lot of new people that are coming in to watching me and not sure how it goes. Um, but I do have a website. You guys can pay via my website. Just know that's an option. Um, so you guys have a big one of these iridescent rhinestones. I believe you have three small ones. And so I got a small one there, a small one here, a small one over here. Oh, and I had a runaway. It's a little runaway under the nail. Let's get you back on here. Um, so, okay, I, I get that question a lot too, Kathleen. How do you pay, pay pale friends and family? Um, because a lot, other demonstrators have business PayPal accounts. I don't have a business PayPal account because I have a website and you can pay me via the website. So if you want to pay me via PayPal friends and family, your choice to, to do it or not, if you choose, oh, it didn't stick on there. If you choose, there's two choices. There's for a good or service or there's friends and family. It's a setting that you put in when you do your phone, um, when you're in your phone after you put the payment. It's your choice, what you wanna do. If you do not use friends and family and you use for good or service, then you have to pay the credit card amount because that's when um, PayPal charges me a fee. So um, it's a setting though, um, uh, Kathleen, in your phone when you do it. So um, it's completely up to you. So like sometimes people will ask me to send them an invoice in PayPal so that you can PayPal. Like I don't do that. I don't have time to create invoices in PayPal. I have a website that my system automatically will charge your credit card after you sign up for your classes and then it sends you an email confirmation. So if people want to pay me via PayPal, I don't create invoices. Then you might as well go to my website and pay for the class that way. But PayPal friends and family is an option um, or Zelle is an option or Venmo. Um, so just know though, if you do pay me th through PayPal and you choose good or service, then you have to add on that extra dollar because PayPal charges. Like, <laughs> it's not fair to the people who are paying cash price to get the cash price and for somebody paying the you know and getting charged me charge the fee so i yeah so if you're ever uncertain or on need to know just reach out to me i can help with that so um um oh no petty powell had a raccoon fight <laughs> all right so we got our embellishments you guys we're almost on the final countdown of this card okay we have to do the bow and i know that you guys last night i had i helped like three people do the bow it's not enjoyable i will tell you guys but it is so exquisite when you're done with it should we wait until you have enough people before we pay no i'm cheryl there's two people uh cheryl and oh see it and i'm already you i'm already on to the next thing marcia i think marshall and cheryl so cheryl and marcia you guys both said yes so now i'm in essence five over my threshold so i'm going to be making eight kits i know that in my head now so you might as well send money um and if you're uncertain how to send the money we need to talk we'll figure that out but yeah i and now i have three more kits still available is my thought in my head so um i must have missed something but thanks for the insight oh yeah no problem kathleen okay you guys i'm taking my open weave ribbon and i am just taking my ribbon scissors and cutting it right down the middle no rhyme or reason. I'm not trying to keep it even. You really aren't going to see. You're just splitting it right down that open area in the middle. Okay. Yes, Donna. Um, I did show samples of the March Funfold cards. You'd have to go back to the beginning of this video. Uh, so once I'm done with this live video, I did show off the Funfold cards in the beginning. So you definitely would be able to see the, those cards. I'm also going to showcase them in a, a ne another video of the March cards coming up next week. So... Um, I sent an email for, oh, Linda Hall wants a kit. Perfect. Okay, so now it sounds like I'm down to two. <laughs> so, okay. So you guys see what I'm doing. I took my two ribbon, slips of ribbon, and put them with my mesh. I'm not using the bow maker. Oh, I wonder if I could use the bow maker. Hmm. Let's see if I can use the bow maker. I did it with my fingers, but the bow maker might work really well. Let's okay so you got to have all three of these things together i want a bigger bow just a slightly bigger bow okay 
Oh yeah, no problem, Donna. You can definitely go back and watch the replay. So I have all three of these things in my hand at the same time, and I have a card getting caught in this. Um, did you see that the ships are available now? I snagged a pair today. Awesome. Oh yeah, the snips. Yeah, you guys, if you've been needing a pair of paper snips, they are off of back order and they are available. Paper snips, what Mo's talking about are these things. They are $10. I have here three of them, glue, paper, and ribbon. And so they have been on back order since December. So you guys, this is a sneaky business here to get all these ends up in here um, to do this. And last night in class, we didn't use the bow maker. Last night we used just our fingers <laughs> and we made it work. <laughs> all right, so there we go. I used the bow maker for it, you guys. If you don't have a bow maker, use your fingers. <laughs> it works <laughs> too, I promise. Now that you have your bow made, you gotta like finagle this and get your mesh to like come alive and you can get your purpley to go around it a little bit more and kind of fluff it up. Oh yeah, look at that go. Okay, so this, pull these. So this mesh is about an inch wide. You just gotta, oh, there it is. Okay, so you gotta get it pulled apart. And, oh, Hildenel, I need to add you. So Hildenel, I have a waiting list for the caddies. I was able to get Holly one and Janet one because I got a couple in. But Hildenel, message me. Message, look at that bow, you guys. Message me, Hildenel, and tell me to add you to the caddy list so that we get one for you. Okay, glue dot action for this, you guys. So mini glue dot and get it off the fingernail and get it on the back of the bow here. And it's gonna go right down here. You don't wanna cover up your sentiment too much. Oh, Sandy Wicklander, message me. I, I You guys, I'm at the point where there's six things that I'm trying to remember <laughs> from what people told me. And I love it when you guys tell me stuff in the messages because it, it, it's on my mind then. But it's awesome when you just follow up with, because um, it builds excitement too. I love it. Um, but if you follow up with a message, that's awesome too. Um, then you sent an email. It's just an FYI, Judy, I know. <laughs> so you guys, sometimes you guys will text me. Sometimes you will email me. And so I do different forms of communication too with you guys. Um, if you email me, then I might follow up with a text depending on what I'm doing. <laughs> so Judy, yeah, I, I totally remember that. I, I did. So, um, all right. So I'm finagling our, my tails here. So some people communicate with me all strictly email. Some people communicate with me all strictly Facebook messaging. Some people text, but then some people will do both things or three things and it gets confusing. And I try to keep it all straight, you guys. I do, I really do. So we're just trimming all of our little tails here. And then let's do this side as well. So my mom cut 12 inches for everybody. So you got 12 inches of the pink ribbon and 12 inches of I mean purple, purple and then the silver. So I'm trying to get that little guy to go in there. Oh yeah. Okay, that's like Hulk Hogan and the Kool-Aid Man. Oh yeah. Okay, so text works best, but email backup. Okay, so if you text, or so Judy, if you email me though, I'm gonna email you back. <laughs> there was something, there was a reason why I went to the email. So, okay, so in this case, if you think you need some more glue dots to help hold your bow down, you could definitely do that. But I'm gonna do one more glue dot. How many tails you got? I've got six tails, Sandy. You should have the same. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna sneak one more glue dot underneath my Humpty Hump back here because I don't want that bulge coming off of there. Okay, got it. I, Deb likes this card, yay! I do too, oh my gosh, so you guys, that's what we ended up with. This is my 10 pound card, that's what I'm calling it. So thanks to Julie Bierschbach. And her birthday card she sent me. So I love it. And I love the iridescent rhinestones. They look like cotton candy to me. So they really pull out the purple in here. Um, just lots of layers. And so you, this is, I'm just curious if you guys will give this card out for those that took the class with me. Are you going to give this card out? Or are you going to save it to case it and keep using it as a sample? <laughs> so, oh man. Okay. And I even put this card in upside down, I think, in here because I didn't want my bow getting all out of disheveled. <laughs> so we're going to put it like this. All right. So I'm going to bring them all in. You guys, we're going to do an action shot. I have a cover to this thing. Let's put this away and we'll bring them all in and take a, 
take a gander at all of them. I just was like, whew, these cards were just, I had so much fun making these cards. So there you go, guys. We got all of them done. I know it took a long time for class. It was a long class tonight, but um, all in all, I think that hopefully you think it's worth it. <laughs> so they're all beautiful. They would be keepers for sure. I text you that I want this kit. Oh, Karen Cotton wants a kit. Okay, so you guys, I think now I'm at like one left potentially unless somebody else messaged. Um, no, I didn't, Stacy. Um, so, so let me just set these here. We'll set these here so you guys can see them again. So I've seen all the comments. I love reading the comments as they come in, you guys. Thank you so much. I'm glad you like these cards. So yeah, you guys, there was just so much. These two are my favorites. And Diane Bogenhagen, this was her favorite. And I had people that liked this one. They're all, they're all so different, but yet also pretty. So, um, Stacey Burns, I did not do the March cards showcase yet. I still have to make the memories and more. I have to finish that. And I have one March monthly class card to make, but I do have new horizons done. I have the fun folds done and, um, ink, paper, scissors is done. And let's just stamp this done. Oh my God. So many cards are made uh, designing. That's what I've been doing the last two weeks. So at the beginning of this video though, Stacy, I did show the fun folds. So, and I did show the let's just stamp. So that's what I showed at the beginning. So you can catch that within like the first 15 minutes of this video once I'm done with this one. So Okay, you guys are loving them. Okay, so I do a drawer prize drawing though for people who placed an order for this class to get it for free. Because when you place an order, it helps get me host credit. That host credit helps me get the supplies, the materials, um, and then sometimes I end up with extras. And so I have a little arsenal of little goodies that I get. So, um, so I show that 13 people placed orders as of right now to get this class for free. And so I'm going to do a random number generator and somebody's going to win a prize for me. And how I do the prizes, they get mailed to you when you get your next card kit. I don't just mail out prizes just to mail out prizes. My deal with the door prizes is then when you have your next class with me, I set the prize off to the side. And when your next package goes out, I add it to your next package. So um, if you never sign up with me for another class, you might not get the prize, but hopefully you take another class with me and then that's when the prize gets added to the package. So um I am enjoying my leave, Barbara. Um, I, I'm, I'm definitely leaning to not going back. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I don't even know where I would fit work in. I, I, the designing, I feel so good getting ahead with designing. It's just amazing. So um, I know, no daytime job. And so when I was sitting with Carissa and Diane these last, like different days these last two weeks, like it just, it felt good just to be sitting with them and not having to think and pull up a computer and, and work. So it was really good. I love it. So no daytime job distracting me. Yes, you got it. So I'm going to flip down. I flip the camera down. I'm going to go to random number generator and pull that up. And I said I had 13 people who placed orders. And you know what we're going to do here is click the word generate and Oh my goodness, number one, Deanna Stell, are you still watching? You are number one. You gave me your order for this class, if I'm not mistaken, back in this, no, it was during um, the Winter Creative Escape in January. You put, yeah, you placed your order back like in early January, so, and then you got this class for free with your order, so congratulations. You are the winner, winner chicken dinner, so yay! to Deanne. Woohoo. Um, and you guys, I don't know if you saw, I did a little drawing last night for the celebration board and Jean Terwilliger won that um, $25 product gift certificate. And I have the three cards from Let's Just Stamp. You guys, on February 7th, I did Let's Just Stamp. And so I have the drawing done for those winners. So we're going to do the drum roll, brrr, right? So, um, I've got three cards here. So this was one of the cards we did. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Carol Schaefer, S-H-A-F-E-R. Carol Schaefer, woohoo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Patsy Roberts, your name was drawn for this. Oh, I loved the, the it's misty moonlight with polished pink. And then last but not least goes to Betty Pyle. Woohoo, Betty. So these three cards, I have Patsy and Betty's um, addresses. I do not have Carol. So if anybody knows Carol Schaefer, um, I think it's Schaefer, 
I would have a C in there for Schaefer, but maybe it's Schaffer. Um, if anybody knows Carol or Carol, if you're watching, I need your address because then I would put this card in the mail for you. And then on Sunday, you guys, I'll be giving, I'll do the drawing for these three cards. Um, I will announce the winners, I should say, for these three on Sunday during stamp stack And then come next week, Thursday, these four cards will be announced to the winners of them. So I don't know if you guys figured it out, but what I do is every card that I make for my Facebook Lives go out to, I, I draw winners for them or I have winners that are selected. And I put them in the mail if I have your address. But if I don't have addresses, I hang on to them and now I have a pretty big pile. I actually have maybe about 20 cards over the last year that I haven't gotten addresses for. So um, at some point, I'm gonna do a little Facebook Live going through those names and give people a last chance to get me an address. Otherwise, I'm gonna figure out a different purpose for them. So. Yes, congratulations to all the winners. Woohoo, everybody. Okay, so thumbs up, hearts, if you really liked these cards and loved this class. Is this class worth sharing with your friends and your family that love the stamp? Because I really hope you think so. There were so many things that we learned and did together that maybe were new to you. And hopefully you took away some things that you can use in your crafting and um, were inspired by to make some pretty cards. So, oh, there they all come in. Awesome. So, awesome, awesome. So, you guys... <laughs> it's been two and a half hours of nonstop talking and I think I need to go to the bathroom and I need to get some water and some food. I'm hungry now. <laughs> this worked up an appetite for me and I really didn't eat dinner. So <laughs> this girl's got to eat. <laughs> so, all right. And then after I'm done with that, you guys, I plan to come back to my computer and write the newsletter. That is my goal for tonight, um, to get the newsletter done. I've been working on so many other things and getting caught up on other things, and that newsletter needs to get done. I love all the purple hearts, Sandy. I love it. So, oh man, you guys. Okay, so hopefully I will surprise you with an, a newsletter in your inboxes tomorrow morning. So, <laughs> all right, lots of sunshine, love, and hugs to you guys. I will see you on Sunday for um, Stamp Stack. I have two in-person classes on Saturday. I have a private class tomorrow night and then, whew, and then the weekend will be over. So woohoo. All right, you guys, we'll see you later. Love you. Bye.